Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board meeting, Board of Health meeting. Uh, being held September 8th, 2021. It is now uh, about 5.05. Location is the main meeting room in Deer Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held remotely. Me meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate and alternate means of public access and where required, public participation provided in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of this March 20th, 2020 executive order, suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, general law, uh, chapter 30A, section 20. Uh, the dial-in number for this meeting is 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 510012. Uh, you can go on to the Town of Deerfield website and click on the meeting and get the Zoom access um, on your computer. So I'll call this meeting to order. How are you? Mm -hmm. We will um, I have a, uh, oh, well, maybe we'll just wait and open meeting here until Carolyn gets here. Do no. you have a motion? Yep, I have a motion we can read. Um, Carolyn's just coming in. We'll, we'll just wait. Yep. We'll oh wait God. for you, and then we're going to go into executive session. We're open in our public meeting now. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, did you did you have any questions for Alex? Or not yet. We're oh. going he sent us an email, and he and I are going to he and I talked about it. So I oh, think I okay. can explain it. So, um, I'll make a motion for executive session. Um, and I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, an open meeting session on the matter of uh, American Civil Liberties Union Foundation's 20, uh, June, July 22nd, 2021 letter and strategy with respect to highway collective bargaining may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position and on the bargaining position respectively. So uh, I move the select board enter into executive session in accordance with the provisions of the most of uh, the Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to review, discuss, and consider the board's response to the American Civil Liberties Union Foundation's uh, July 22nd, 2021 letter regarding the board's public comment period, whereas a discussion on this matter in open session would have a detrimental effect on the board's litigating position, and the chair so declares it. Does the chair? I do. And to reconvene in open session to vote. Uh, to approve the same and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair de so declares. I do again. Thank you. So roll call vote. I Carolyn Ness. I Trevor McDaniel. I Dave Wolfram. And we would um, we would also in this motion invite um, Warren and Michael uh, Kennefeck Al Castro, Lisa Mead, and Kate Federoff. Kate Federoff and Kevin Scarborough. And Kevin Scarborough, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Now we get started meeting. Okay, so the first thing on our agenda is the adaptive growth. Ken? Good evening. Hello, Ken? Good evening, how are you? Good, how are you, Trevor? I'm doing good. It's good to see you. Um, so will Casey be able to put the PowerPoint up on the screen so everyone can see it? I think so. I think She's so. Got a what? Hold on. Got a finger up. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as good as Jennifer is, no. so <laughs> pardon me while I catch up a bit. Um, Let me know if you need me to help with anything. Back 
Welcome, Ken. How have you been? Very good. Very good. Good. Settling in? Yeah. Good. Welcome Feels good to be back. Canada. Yeah. It's beautiful weather right now, too, other yeah. than hurricanes and flooding rains, but <laughs> <laughs> at least today is beautiful. Okay. Hold on days. a second while I get back to Zoom and share my screen. Okay. All right, hold your breath, Ken. I think I can do this. <laughs> Tell us how you need us to proceed. Yeah, so, you, so I'd like to just um, read through this PowerPoint presentation um, and then take questions and uh, comments afterwards. Um, I'll try to just read okay. through it um, yeah. quite yeah. quickly, but slow enough so everyone can grasp it all. Yeah, tell everyone who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, so my name is Kenneth Boquillen. Um, this is a proposal tonight for our South Deerfield project. Um, Tara Hopper is here with me. She's our, she's my attorney. Um, so the, we have a, our proposed campus um, in Deerfield. So Sunny Days Cannabis has entered into a land purchase agreement for 28 acres located at Zero Greenfield Road in Deerfield, Mass. Um, this property is within the town designated green zone for legal cannabis cultivation, manufacturing, testing laboratory, and dispensary. Uh, Sunny Days Cannabis intends to build a state-of-the-art campus comprised of a dispensary, a third-party testing laboratory, and eventually three cultivation research buildings. Uh, we'd be starting with a single building in, in the first phase. Okay. So here's a little, just a look at um, a conceptual site plan. Um, Trevor and I have walked this property, looked at this, um, the land, looked at everything, and this was felt that we this was our best uh, conceptual site plan. Of course, once we deal with um, the civil engineer and the town, you know, could potentially change slightly. But this is, I think, this is pretty close to um, what we'd be looking at. Yeah. And that would consist of A, B, and C would be cultivation. And then you have the uh, D is the dispensary kind of retail store area. And E is the testing laboratory. Correct. Uh, which would be behind the store. Yep. Great. Correct. Thank you. Do you, do you ask, Ken, do you uh, just a percentage of coverage of the 28 acres when you have full build, build out, do you know what um, you're talking about? Yeah, so there's about seven acres of buildable land there. We'll probably be lose, using maybe five of it. Okay. So the, Perfect. the reason Perfect. I really like this property, um, uh, once I went in the beginning when I found it, um, is because it's sort of surrounded. It's like an island almost. Um, there's wetlands around it. There's no residential people around it. So I felt it was a really good um, place for this type of manufacturing. Yep. So we presently own and operate a licensed 15,000 square foot cannabis cultivation facility in Woodenville, Washington. Um, there we focus on cannabis production, advanced technology development, and genetic research. Um, I share all our research with industry leaders um, to better understand where the cannabis is presently. Um, we're constantly trying to develop new industry efficiency standards. I work with a couple different um, nonprofit organizations that are funded by the government, and we like to set goals for the future. Um, things are moving towards, uh, you know, carbon efficiency, and we're constantly working towards that goal. Our development team consists of Adaptive Grow Technologies, which is based out of Ridgefield, Connecticut. Um, Climate Tech Controls, which is our partner, and they're out of Seattle. Um, DBHF HMS Engineering and Graphite Architecture. And we have an energy efficiency design and advanced technology, and we're quickly becoming the gold standard for the cannabis production facilities. We're building over 200,000 square feet for clients in Massachusetts right now. Right. So this is... Um, what I feel could potentially be the community benefits. So the protect, projected 3% tax revenues. So I feel at phase one, um, the production facility could, could potentially 
um, bring in revenue of a million dollars. Um, the dispensary could bring in potentially half a million. I think it'll take a little bit to get up to speed and get us up to full production. But I think with the phase one, we should be able to reach that type of goal with the present uh, cost of, of the product in Massachusetts. Phase two would be two additional buildings and each one of them would produce projected a million dollars a year. So when we're fully built out, um, I feel this, this facility should, could, be, could easily produce 3.5 million annually for the town. Um, as far as jobs go, um, phase one should create yeah. about 50, yep. Uh, just, just, for, uh, just for clarification for the people listening, these are projected amounts to the town and not what your actual sales are, right? Right, correct. Correct. So this, I, would, this, might this, be would be, this would be this would be three percent. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, the phase one would create approximately fifty jobs. Um, the jobs will be anywhere from fifteen dollar per hour unskilled labor um, that we would train up to you know management jobs that are fifty dollars an hour. Um, it's and everywhere is in between. Um, it depends on the skill level and the, and the responsibility of the jobs. Um, mm -hmm. But this is a pretty good idea. Um, our facility in Seattle has this type of range. So a lot of this data comes from our existing facility. Um, we've been in business for four years, so we have quite a lot of data. Um, phase two would create um, some more jobs. That would be, we're thinking 40 jobs for each building. Um, so that could be 80 jobs. And we're looking to hire local contractors and employees whenever possible here. Uh, local is, is our preference. Um, as long as we can find you know, people that are willing, um, we're definitely interested in hiring locally. And of course, the people, if we don't hire locally, um, those people will be moving into the area um, to help support the community. Um, and our commitment, um, of course, we've worked with Casey and Kate quite a bit here to get to this point. We've done a lot of due diligence. The town has put quite a bit of effort in. We very much appreciate that. Um, and as part of the special permit, Sunny Days Cannabis will contribute to the community educational programs on public health and drug abuse prevention. And the company agrees to provide at least 150 paid volunteer hours per year to assist the community. Um, right. right. We're looking right. for, you know, that. However, the select board would like us to work with them on this. We're we're open um, to suggestions, and and whatever the community really needs the most, we'd be we'd be there for you. Great, thank you. Um, as far as security, um, there's always concerns with security um, in these facilities. We have a really good track record in Seattle. We have never had any problems at all. Um, so what we'll do, be, we'll be implementing similar stuff um, in Massachusetts. So we'll implement all security measures in accordance with the CCC regulations. Um, all the employees will need a cleared background check in accordance with the CCC regulations. Um, everyone will need a state verified ID, um, whether it's a customer or an employee, they'll all need a verif verification state ID that'll be run through a machine. Um, to enter any of the buildings on this campus. Um, only individuals 21 years of age and older will be allowed to enter, and all employees will access rooms containing cannabis or cannabis products through ID verification technology. Um, so everyone will have to have their card, they'll have to swipe it. They can't get in or they can't get out until they swipe. They can get out, but they got to swipe to get in. Um, and, yeah. and, and when they leave, we'll know when they leave. So it's... Uh, We'll make sure the security is, is top notch. We've been working with a couple of firms that we've interviewed locally in Massachusetts. Um, the two that we like are both very, very good reputation. I'm working with one of them on another project in Attleboro presently. So we haven't picked one yet, but we will get a local security firm to work with us. Right. And then the feasibility. So. This project did, just didn't come here tonight. Um, we've been working on this project for many months. Um, I've been doing a lot of due diligence um, with both the town and, and Tara and I have done a lot. So just to give you a little idea about the feasibility. So spoke extensively with Eversource. They've confirmed that there's enough power needed for this cannab cannabis facility um, right at the corner. 
Um, so pretty, pretty good deal. There's a, there's a substation down there. They have plenty of power for us. Um, the towns confirmed that the city sewer line is available at the road that we can tap into and use. Um, so that we'd be bringing revenue to the town through through the sewer system. We'd have to pay for that. Um, that would be metered, and they would know what we're using at all times. Um, the wetlands confirmed that this property is buildable. Um, the prop the the seven acres in the middle is is a good piece of property, um, but they've they have told us that we need to go through the proper state and town procedures um, to get to that point of approval. Um, there's no residential abutters to this property or in the immediate vicinity. There's a couple businesses, um, highway on both sides. The town owns the south end and the veterinarian owns the north end. So I feel this is a pretty good location. There's no residential abutters, so which is, which is very nice. Uh, we won't be uh, bothering anybody. Um, we don't have, we don't really, we won't, we don't have any things that will bother people. Um, um, smell won't be an issue. Noise won't be an issue. There'll be neither of those. Um, but still, it's nice to not have to be around residential abutters when you have a manufacturing plant. Um, and there does not seem to be any issue with the traffic on 510. But a traffic study will pre be provided to the town for review during the special permit process. We'll be having a local company do that, a reputable firm. Um, so, so that's part of our agreement. So okay. to give you an idea on our projected timelines, so all these timelines are feasible. Um, I've built a few facilities for clients in Massachusetts already, and we've, we've, we've achieved these timelines a little bit quicker than I have on here, but I wanted to give us some time, make sure we get everything completed. So if all goes well with the HCA and the town is, is accepting our project, um, we'd be applying for the CCC license sometime around October 15th of this year. Um, given four months to, to complete that provisional, um, hopefully we would attain that CCC provisional license by February 15th. As soon as we receive that, we'll be able to begin the special permit process and the architectural review. Um, the special permit process is of course with the town. We'll be working directly with the town um, on all, that, all the information needed. And the architectural review is with the CCC. We can run those two simultaneously and hopefully, you know, within three months, we should be able to achieve those. Um, and, and if we achieve those um, by, you know, obtain the special permit and the building permit by May 15th, then sometime late in May, would we would break ground on this project. If we're able to hit these goals and break ground in late May, um, we should have no problem in completing construction obtaining final licenses and approvals and begin cultivation by October, possibly early November of 2022. Great. And then Very if good. this host agreement is agreed, or is approved by sunny for sunny days, um, then we're very much excited to become part of this community um, and, and start our project. Um, we're, I was born and raised here in the Northeast. Um, We've been out, been in Seattle for three years, uh, almost four now, working on our facility there. Um, so it feels good to be back and we're looking forward to building our second facility here in South Deerfield. Great. And does anybody I, uh, have any questions or comments that Tara or I could answer? Well, you know, the one thing of concern for me is, you know, Deerfield was very progressive, and we were probably one of the first communities to get approved of cannabis uh, cultivation in Western Mass. And right now, it seems like we're just about the last ones to get anything here. I've had a lot. Of uh, we've had a lot of companies come through. There's been funding issues and things like that that are, you know, of concern. Uh, giving host agreements and then finding out that the people we've given host agreements to might not have the right funding or the right personnel. Uh, so, you know, that's, and, you know, there's a lot of people in town that have that concern of giving additional host agreements. And, you know, it's, um, 
you know, you know, to be blunt, are you fully funded? Yes. So to give you a little background on our company, so we're fully funded to do this, start this project and do phase one. Um, so this isn't new to us. This isn't our first rodeo. So I've been in construction for 40 years here in Connecticut. Um, I built over 300 houses and over 50 commercial buildings here in Litchfield and Fairfield County. Um, we also have built close to a million square feet uh, worldwide now um, for cannabis cultivations, exactly like this, same, same design. Um, so we also have a very good team. Um, we have a CEO, we have a CTO, CFO, Tara is our attorney, um, and we are all skilled at what we do. This isn't the first time we've done this. I've actually, I'm building 200,000 square feet in Massachusetts right now for other clients. Um, we've gone through the special permit process and the architectural review uh, five times now. We'll be going through it twice more in the next few months for other clients besides myself. Um, so just to assure you, we have the team to do this and we are funded. Okay, thank you. I have had these same conversations with Ken quite a bit about uh, kind of Deerfield's past down this down this um, endeavor, and um, he, he's assured me that he's anxious to get moving, get rolling. Um, I, I've read through the um, the HCA. We you know we modeled our um, host community agreement kind of based on what we had for the last few entities, um, but we have brought it up to speed. I think working with your attorney and and our attorney, I think we're, we're in, I think I'm in agreement with it. Um, I'll let the others speak for themselves, but I, um, I feel pretty comfortable about this. It does have, um, you know, some language to get, get the project moving and hopefully a build date within two years. And obviously from, you're looking to get going right away. And I just saw your calendar so that I feel good about that. Um, I, you know, I've, I've been, again, we've all been through this quite a bit in the last few years. I feel comfortable with this host agreement and I, Feel comfortable with you, Ken, and I'm really excited about the plans you have and uh, the vision you have for that space. And I'd really like to see some economic development come to the town and, and get some revenues coming in so we can start funding a lot of other projects that we have. And um, the, the income stream will be very beneficial for the town. Uh, so that'd be great. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Any questions, Carolyn? Well, no, I've, I've reviewed the host agreement. Um, you know, I know our attorney has, and I've talked to Casey about it. So um, I think everything really looks good there. Um, you know, um, I'm really excited to have this happen uh, for the town of Deerfield. Uh, it's, you know, it's a very positive step because we need additional funding sources for the town of Deerfield. Uh, we we don't have as strong an industrial base as we probably should. And so, and a lot of the burden has been going on to the homeowner and people have seen their taxes going up and up and you know, things like this can help mitigate a lot of that and get Deerfield back to where it was before. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about this project. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, hits home for me so so I'm I'm very supportive I we put a lot of effort in as Trevor referenced before and Dave has referenced before trying to get us ready for something happening and it just hasn't panned out so um, I'm I have been disappointed but I'm really excited it seems like you're really legitimate and um, that you're gonna do something and this site um, I think could be developed really well so that um, it becomes a, a site that will be less of a mosquito um, infested area <laughs> and more and more developed in a, in a green so manner. Mosquitoes in there. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's a lovely place. Yeah, well, perfect. Working with Ken and walking the property and all, it does, it does, you know, and, and hearing his vision of keeping it natural as much as he can and, um, you know, having winding roads through the, you know, not looking to clear cut seven acres of trees out of there, you know, spoke a lot to me and I think to this community that they value uh, open space and, you know, natural habitat. I think you, you share that same view and you're looking obviously to, you'll be cutting down trees to put up buildings and all and 
grow facilities, but a lot of it you tend to keep as much natural as you can with some walking paths and, you know, for your employees and that kind of thing. So um, I think it will be a good investment of that property. Um, it will be able to manage the water on that property pretty well. And obviously you'll go through all the site plan review and work with the conservation commission and, you know, and, and the planning board on all of that. So uh, I'm, I'm really comfortable and I'd, I'd make a motion to approve the host community agreement between the town of Deerfield, Massachusetts and Sunny Days LLC. I will second that. Uh, on, uh, made on this day, September 9th, excuse me, September 8th, 2021. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Neff. Aye, Dave Wolfram. So, thank you, Ken. Step one for you, Ken. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, thank you very, very much. So, yeah, we, we very much, Tara and I very much appreciate all the work that the town has put into this. We look forward to coming to your community, being part of your community, and, and building a nice facility. Um, I'd just like to leave on one note. So, of course, the the, the Production facilities will be a, a engineered a single story building. Um, but as far as the dispensary, um, we're, ve we're very much willing to work with the town. Um, whatever type of look they want in that building, whether they want a, an old barn look, or I'm not sure what, what the town really wants. Um, every town's looking for something different. Some want to keep it original look, some want a modern look. I know across the street, there's a pretty modern building over there. Um, but we're very much open. So as this process goes along, I'd like some feedback from the town members to understand a little more about what you'd like to see. The only real building you'll be seeing from the road is probably the dispensary. You might see a little yep, bit of yeah. a testing lab off to the side, but uh, really just looking for some feedback and we'll build the kind of building that um, the town is really looking look for on that space. Yeah, I assume you're gonna get a fair amount of feedback from the uh, site plan review from the planning board. Uh, and exactly what they'd like to see. Um, that's an, uh, another electric board within the town. Uh, I know you've already have plans to talk with the folks, but the, uh, the, you know, that's part of the site plan review is those type of conditions and looking at things. So I think you have good partners there. I think you'll yep. really enjoy. I know we're really interested in dragonfly habitat. So, yeah. so that would be good. Okay. okay. Thank you. So Thank you very much for your time, everyone, tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye-bye. So we'll get a signed copy. You want me to sign this one? Or? When he signs. Perfect. Right. All right. Moving on. Okay. Uh, next thing on our agenda is, uh, uh, Kimberly, about the uh, funding of the Furcock Watershed Base Plan for Bloody Brook. Hi, um, th thanks for having me tonight. Um, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments has funding to develop watershed based plans for three to five watersheds across Franklin County and Bloody Brook was one that we were interested in working in because of the water quality problems that the brook has, as well as the, the flooding, the chronic flooding problems the watershed has. So the development of these watershed based plans, once they're approved by the DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, it makes the um, community eligible for the DEP's 319 grant program. So that grant program is a nice fit with um, for projects like stormwater management, for example, or um, bank stabilization projects. You can also use that grant funding for, to help fund projects that are identified through your MVP um, planning work that you've been doing. So this um, project, this development of the watershed based plan would be done at no cost to the town because FERCOG has the funding already in hand. But what we would um, ask if of the town, if, if you're interested in us moving forward with this, is that we um, would be able to talk to the 
Board of Health, um, the health agent, um, talk to Kevin Scarborough, uh, talk to the assessors. Um, we'd like to involve the property owners in the watershed if they're interested so that we can talk to them about problems that they see on their property um, maybe do a site walkover if only if they're willing but we would want to to reach out to all the property owners in the watershed and tell them about the project and you know encourage them to participate with us we um, would like to do uh, windshield survey, which is basically we're in the car and we're driving around kind of documenting uh, conditions. But again, being able to actually access the properties um, that are in the watershed will be really, really helpful. And um, we feel, you know, that Deerfield has been working, you know, quite successfully for a number of years now through the MVP program. You just had all the culverts inventoried, which um, this work would build upon the work that we did under the Franklin County Stormwater Management Plan in Deerfield. It kind of builds on that. So there's a lot of momentum that we really feel could be um, leveraged with, with this plan. And we have funding uh, through the end of June uh, 2022. And the state has um, you know, a template, a report format that we would use uh, to do this work. And so I wanted to come before this select board to see if you were interested in having us uh, do this work. And if, if you are um, kind of giving me the the green light, if you will, to contact the assessors, um, the health agent, Kevin, and um, property owners in the watershed. And I could put together a very short notice um, that you could put on your website to let people know that the project was underway. And um, yeah. Oh, and the other thing, um, oh, I, I'm sorry. The other thing that we would do as part of this plan is identify potential projects. Um, so again, that would dovetail nicely with the, the work that, you, that you're already doing. And um, so, yeah. Great. Very enthusiastic. Um, I think you'll find a lot of, um, you know, property owners are, are also really excited about getting something moving on this bloody brook. It's, I, it's very difficult. We've been working on this for a little bit and um, we've identified other partners like the Mosquito District, Great. which is what we were gonna do or why we formed the Mosquito District in the first place exactly. to make sure we could do work there. But also the Franklin Conservation District that both um, Kimberly and I sit on, of course, because there is a lot of farmland in there and yes. that way we can access NRCS funding to get projects done too. So right. there's multiple, multiple partners and then the federal and the 319 is really pass through money. So that's federal money, which means that all the state grants. You can keep are, them up. Yeah, this is our match without us having to come up with the money. That's great. So yeah. it's huge, huge, huge. So yeah, Kimberly exciting. and I were just getting really excited mm -hmm. because this is, you know, we've been targeting this so much. And, yeah, yes. And we've Thank had you. several different close calls, but we, haven't actually had people having recent flooding since Bob, and I and I think we've got to really plan and make sure that we're working on this because that's always been in the back oh, yeah. of my mind for years now. Well, and if you look at what happened just this past week in, I know. in New Jersey, and I, I, I can't even imagine getting three inches of rain in that watershed in in an hour. Um, you would definitely need to work on it. So I'm I'm very excited and very happy to move forward. Do you forward. do you want us to formally vote, Kimberly, or you just want our consensus to do it? Well, uh, I would leave that up to you. I think being able when people when we're doing the outreach, being able to say that the town that the select board you know in, endorses this work or supports this work might be. Um, you yeah. know, might be helpful because sometimes people have questions about like, why are you here? What are you doing? You know. Yep. Um, All right. Um, then I will make the motion to that we support the FERCOG watershed based plan for the Bloody Brook 
um, and, and have that as an impaired waterway, have to start the work on that. I'll second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. Any further discussion? No, I'm really excited to see where this goes. Yes. We're not. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolina. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Great. We look forward to thank Oh, I, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm looking forward to it too. And thank you very much. And I'll make sure to schedule like periodic check ins with you as well. Great. Appreciate great. that. Thank you so thank much. You. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Kimberly. You're welcome. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is uh, Nancy Molino. Yep. Uh, Hi, Nancy. From the Betty Hi, Allen chapter of the Daughters of American Revolution. Thank you. Requesting us to vote on a proclamation. Yes. Good evening. My name is Nancy Milano. I'm a member of the Betty Allen chapter of the National Society of Daughters in the American Revolution. The DAR is an organization that was founded over 100 years ago to celebrate our patriotic roots and heritage, heritage as Americans. One aspect of the DAR is our commitment to country. As such, we strive to promote the values and freedoms that we as Americans have through the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. When the United States was founded in 1776, we were a collection of 13 colonies with a small central power in the Congress. In 1777, the Articles of Confederation were drawn up by the Second Continental Congress to formalize the government of the nation. These provided for a Congress with representation based on population and gave the national government all power not designated to the states. After considerable debate and alterations, the Articles of Confederation were adopted by Congress on November 15th in 1777. In this first Constitution of the United States, each state retained uh, one vote in Congress Instead of forming a strong national government, the states entered into a firm league of friendship with each other. However, when the war ended in 1783 with the Treaty of Paris at Versailles, this form of government would become problematic. After the war's end, the soldiers who fought returned home to farms. They had, they had received some income that helped the farms during the war and into the 1780s. Throughout the states, there were different uprisings that occurred, with the most notable happening a few miles away over in the town of Orange, Boucher's Rebellion. The end result of rebellion that came out of desperation was the convening of the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia in the summer of 1787 and the writing of the Constitution that we hold so dear. As such, there is no national monument to the Constitution in our nation's capital. The DAR petitioned the Congress in 1955 into 1956 to pass a resolution of this foundation of the American form of government, which was signed into law by President Eisenhower. The commitment of the NSDAR is to encourage study and education of the public about the Constitution that was adopted on the 17th of September, 1787. What I'm asking is for the community of Deerfield to support this week with the issuing of proclamation and I request that on the 17th of September at 4 p.m. to ring bells when the last signature was placed on the Constitution. That's great. Thank you. Uh, I make a motion that we um, support this proclamation. I'm going to read the proclamation. Do we need to? Okay. Um, the town of Deerfield, the proclamation, whereas September 17th, 2021 marks the 234th anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America uh, by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations which will uh, commemorate the occasion, and whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17th through September 23rd as Constitution Week. Therefore, we, David Wolfram, Carolyn Shores Ness, and Trevor McDaniel, by virtue of the authority vested in us as the select board of the town of Deerfield, do hereby 
proclaim the week of September 17th through the 23rd as Constitution Week and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals of the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to, to us through this guardian uh, of our liberties, remembering that lost rights may never be regained. In witness thereof, we have hereunto set our hands on and caused the seal of Deerfield, the town of Deerfield to be affixed to this, um, I would say September, September 17, 2021, the day, um, of the year of our Lord, 2021. Here we have it. Okay. Good. Motions made and seconded. I'm going to have to borrow your pen. Okay. Great pen. I made the motion. Carolyn seconded. seconded. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Dave Wolfham. And I think in in signing this and, and talking about Constitution Week, I think it's only appropriate that we also affirm our commitment to to uh, uphold and and work with the um, work with our laws and our government to continue to expand the rights of of um, minorities in this country. Um, you know, we've gone through a really rough year and a half, I guess, with COVID and racial strife in this country. And I think it's really important to continue that work of um, of moving our, our country forward, not just based on the values of 1787, but, you know, the values we hold today. Um, you know, the document has changed over, over many years by adding different amendments um, to bring more rights to those that are, um, that have been oppressed, you know, throughout our history and I think it's important to continue that work and not just in stride what was done then but to continue the work going forward. It is extremely important to do so and the Constitution is not just a dead document, it's a living document, it's always changing and it's something that by this, by this week and by proclaiming it, it's supporting and showing very much that it's live and it's modern and still relevant in this day and age. Thank you. Yes. I want to thank you for making the effort to do this. Yep. Very great. Do you have a photo somewhere? You can take a picture? I'm going to take your picture. Oh my gosh, we're going to take our picture. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Here. I'll just roll. We need a frame for this. Yeah. yeah, we've been framed more than once. <laughs> Thank you. I, I also dropped off a hard copy in the Dropbox earlier this afternoon. Oh, and I can't get to it, so I have them sign <laughs> something. I'll see if I can get to it tomorrow morning. We should sign Andy. again. I don't have the key. <laughs> <laughs> and That's I got okay. the email after everybody left. So I'm like, oh. Thank you. Well, I, I could, my timing was off because I, I drive through Deerfield as I go down to Westfield because I'm doing some training down in Westfield to be a, a history teacher. And it's just my timing was off and I've, Miss dropping it off the past two days no. at the town hall, and mm. so I just put it in the drop box. And the suggestion I was given was, Oh, why don't you just stick it in the recorder tube? And I looked at um, the other person in the car, I was like, Yeah, no, I don't trust the recorder delivered to not smash it, no. having no. delivered no. the recorder to the town hall for two years. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Okay. <laughs> So I may have Thank to circle you, back Nancy. around with you about that tomorrow, no Nancy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You're welcome. You, you too. Thank you. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is uh, Chris Curtis for Conservation Work MVP Consulting Contract for approval. Is Chris on the phone? I mean, where is Chris? Is, yeah. Hi. Oh, there he is. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, I want to just uh, mention that I've been um, losing my connection um, fairly regularly, and it comes back up in about five or 10 seconds. So if, if I lose you, um, <laughs> I guess I'll be back shortly. Um, okay. I asked to come um, before the board this evening to make a brief presentation on our next round um, MVP grant. Um, I had watched the recording of the August 25th meeting where this um, was discussed uh, the last time. And there were seemed that there was like a fair amount of um, confusion and, and um, incorrect information about the project and the scope. So I wanted to just kind of set the record straight on it, on a few things. Okay. Um, so just some some brief background on on MVP and this project. Um, as you know, I've I've been working for the town now for five years um, on MVP projects and have successfully written and secured five different MVP grants for the town that total um, $1.3 million um, worth of funding. And those grants have uh, brought in a, a lot of things to the town, but if you look at, at just the savings. We should not let Tiffy do that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. well, he's, he's there, but he, he's muted at the moment. Chris, you're muted. Yeah. I didn't oh, know he's you. coming back. Sorry, Chris. I, something sorry. happened with the no, world. I'm know, sorry. I don't know what's happening, but uh, it keeps happening. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was saying that there were savings to the town from, from just two projects. Uh, the Mill Village Road culvert uh, saved $206,000 um, in funding. That was the state share of, of that project. And the Kelleher Drive uh, saved $325,000. So altogether, th those two projects alone saved the town $531,000. And um, that was state money that was expended that the town would have otherwise needed to expend on those projects. So it's been a pretty good deal for the town. Um, We've also done, uh, we've held a very successful um, townwide climate forum, uh, developed a new green infrastructure policy that has been held up as a statewide model, uh, developed a flood evacuation plan for uh, historic Deerfield, uh, created a climate curriculum for frontier high school students, and um, been a lot, a lot of other projects over the course of the five years. So I won't go through all of them. So to focus on the fifth round MVP grant, the process that we went through just um, kind of as, as a reminder was we first met with the MVP core group, um, group that was appointed by the select board and they came up with the um, basic scope ideas. And then we presented those to the select board back in the spring. The select board reviewed the, uh, the potential scope items Sorry, okay. the select board reviewed those um, items at a meeting um, and cut out some of the more expensive items and then voted to move, move forward with five um, specific tasks in the final scope. And so the tasks in the grant um, are that uh, Number one, we would work with the town's new green infrastructure committee uh, to continue to coordinate meetings, uh, to do project reviews, and to generally implement the policy, which includes looking at um, new funding sources and grants and so forth to try to do um, green infrastructure projects in the town. The second task is to work with frontier teachers to implement the climate curriculum that we previously developed for the, the high school and the middle school, but they actually I'm back again. Okay. I know you um, can do this. And uh, the second part of that task is to work with um, students on a uh, outdoor classroom project that will involve um, 
doing climate resiliency work um, for the, the high school and actually doing some plantings um, in the rain gardens that we put in at the uh, frontier or at the Deerfield Elementary School. can just come come down or maybe make a phone call could do it there's a combo you can call, call in to yeah. the meeting I'm right. doing the zoom it might be better if you called in to the phone i'm doing that now trevor yeah okay that might be easier because the, the zoom just isn't working Just a blanket apology because it happens every you well, know, no, you can do. Breakout rooms are harder for me oh. than they are for Jennifer. So well, no. And she had a family. All family. this technology is difficult. No one's to blame. Has the, has the hybrid stuff come in? No. no. We're watching for it. Forward. Well, part of it is the reason our server is back order too is because of chips. Chip. I know. Hi, Chris. I see your number. <laughs> I was thinking he would call through this thing, no? No. Oh. Call in. The phone number? Yeah. Wouldn't it go through here? Uh, no. It's got to go. He's on mute. Oh. Chris, you're on mute. What do you have to do? Star six or something? Star six. Hit star six on your phone, Chris. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 I have this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. All right. So, I'm um, sorry about that. That's um, okay. Continuing on with the uh, with the scope, the third task is the uh, Healthy Soils Demonstration Project, which would be um, done with a second consultant um, collaboratively. Uh, they are called Regenerative Design Group, um, located in Gre Greenfield. Um, this has been one of Carolyn's um, pet projects, um, and the project would in in involve analyzing and mapping the town's soils. Um, and identifying those soils that are the most important for carbon sequestration um, in town, then developing strategies for protecting those soils, um, and then lastly, working with selected farmers that have uh, volunteered and, and a school to do a demonstration project uh, for healthy soils management, and then lastly, to coordinate a series of, of outreach events um, that um, would get this information out to other farmers and other landowners in the town. Um, the fourth task is a community climate engagement task. And this is uh, two parts and, and includes coordinating a second townwide climate forum, similar to the one that we were so successful with a couple of years ago at Frontier and uh, providing some content to create a town climate webpage so that some of the projects that we've completed can be um, made more available to the public and other information about climate resiliency and preparations for climate change can be, can be put into a place that people can consume that. Um, and then the last um, task is um, uh, progress reporting and there's a project case study that has to be done that's a required piece at the end of the project to um, describe all of the work that's been done. So, um, you know, there, there are five total tasks. I, I think at the last meeting there was some confusion that there was just perhaps just one task and $35,000 for one task with Frontier. Um, that's not correct. There, there's actually only $6,200 of, of the project goes to the Frontier task, and the rest goes to the, the other pieces. Um, I think there was some concern that the town – couldn't afford this project um, expressed. And I just want to uh, make clear that the town's share of, of the grant, um, the cash match is, is only $14,000. Um, Most of that goes to uh, regenerative design for the healthy soils project. Um, so that's, um, that's, that's the total town commitment. Um, I think there was a comment that this fund Funding could be better used to pay for a town planner. Um, and I just want to clarify that you, you can't use MVP funds for, for a task like that for, for a town planner. 
or for, um, for example, financial management of the project. Um, th those are not eligible costs. Um, so I just wanted to try to address some of those concerns and, and uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to present the information. I hope that I've provided some clarity and you can, you can make a, a, a better decision. Uh, happy to answer any questions that you might have. So I was looking at, um, you know, last time we had a full accountability of the tasks, right, that we were looking at. And, and, and the, you know, I was just struggling with the cost um, that, you know, just looking at the cost that we have spent in the last couple, I guess where the comment came from about a planner is I, I understand that a planner wouldn't be implementing the MVP grants. And I, I, I don't, not to take anything away, I, you've done a lot of good work over the year, uh, five years on getting us to these, this place in Deerfield um, and, and implementing the grants. I think, I think what I was hearing was a lot of frustration with the way we were wrapping up the work on the last grant. And it was an immense amount of frustration in town hall and how this all got put together and the work that our staff had to do that, you know, couldn't, it, we just, it's hard for a small town with two, two or three staff members um, to be consumed by a week of the MVP grant and the requirements and the writing. And we felt, I, I guess what I was thinking was the money that we had spent over the last couple of years or a year or so um, on this kind of also left us with a ton of work on our end and, and people just really pulling their hair out with the way the grants were written and, and re all the reporting was done. And I was very apprehensive to go ahead and sign another grant if that process was going to unfold again and I was going to you know, lose employees over and I, that's a stretch, but people were really upset about how things were, were, were laying out and, and what they were having to do to, to get this through. And it was frustrating for the state, it was frustrating for our staff. And I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to happen again. And I wanted to make sure that the value was there for the money that the 35,000 that we would be spending. I assume that's our money. If it may be, maybe, maybe no, it's no, not. It's not. No, that's what, that's the point I was trying to make earlier. Is that the the town's share of this, again to give you the number, is uh, fourteen thousand dollars, and and most of that money would go to the contract with regenerative design, which is a, a separate contract. So, and I guess that's what was missing from this list was what was town's money and what was grant money getting paid to consultants, because we saw, you know, there was. Um, I think for the for the frontier, um, the, I, I saw a bill or like sixteen thousand dollars to maybe it was the healthy soils action. Um, was sixteen thousand was going to regenerative and ten thousand to the MVP consultant. So that was you know twenty six thousand dollars. So I was wondering what the ten thousand dollars was for if the regenerative design group was doing the work. So I was just trying to, and, and then how much of that was town money? N none of that was really, I guess, maybe I didn't see it. I saw 2000 provided by town, or that was a cash match, and then all the rest is grant money. Is that the idea on task three? On, on task three, the, the, um, the amount of the state grant is 19500 and the yep. town cash match is 6500 there are five subtasks to that, and so there are pieces of that ta of that overall project that regenerative are going to do, and there are pieces that conservation works are going to do. Um, they're not they're, they're not duplicative. They're they're separate tasks, um, and they okay. would be billed separately. That's helpful to understand. Yeah. Um, did you, um, yeah, I was just going to explain that Keith Zoltenberg from regenerative design has the state contract for soil health, healthy soil. And so, and I'm on the state commission and I'm on the subcommittee that is supposed to be implementing the state soil, healthy soils program, which was funded in this last budget year. It's, 
it's behind. I mean, we're setting up the department and setting out goals. And the whole idea of using Keith was to make sure that what we're doing in town is aligned with the state. So potentially that we can get more um, grants down the line, but also that there is some kind of um, coordination that's happening through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and it, it's a hard concept to explain to people, but we, we do a lot here in town. And the idea was to have frontier students, they just don't have the opportunity to do field work like right. when we were growing up or like when I was growing up as part of your classes. And so um, Galinsky's, the Galinsky farm was so wonderful because they are, you know, just across the street from Frontier. Yeah. And they were going to allow, um, you know, the kids from the class to go and, you know, sample their fields and, you know, do, do, just walk across the street and be able to do some stuff at their, at their farm. And, um, you know, I mean, it would be coordinated with the class and the yeah. teachers and all that. But it was just a really wonderful opportunity to appreciate what farmland does for our climate and yep. how important it is and, and food security and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And, um, and then, the, the conversely, we were going to try to do something with um, Deerfield Academy and the North Meadows or the South Meadows or something. So, you know, we had farmers lined up. Yeah, I, I mean, I believe in the program, and I, and I wouldn't have voted for all of this scope of work if, you know, if I didn't, I didn't think it was worthy of doing. You know, when we set all this up, my hesitancy was just the craziness that happened at the end of last grant reporting, and I, I got to know that that's not going to happen again, or we have a plan to figure that out so it's not going to happen again. And I don't know if this written in, a, in such a way that we're going to be back at this a year from now. Got her hand up. Well, Trevor, can I, uh, can I try to address that a little bit? Okay, um, she's first. Sorry. Go ahead, Casey. Chris. I'm sorry. This, this goes probably to what you're going to say, too. Um, Andrew Smith at MVP has notified us that we're going to have to restructure how we report. So they're going to give us some sort of guidance as to how we're going to do that because this was such an issue for them as well. And, and what, I, what I was gonna say is that, you know, this, this year's project is extremely much more simple than the, the one last year. We had an incredibly complex project with multiple consultants and multiple contractors and construction work. Um, but there is, a, there is a new process at MVP. I, I was just um, earlier this week in a uh, kickoff meeting from an, for another town where, where I'm working and doing a grant. And they have a new process for invoice tracking um, that they are going to use. I think they must have run into this problem with multiple towns. Um, and I think, you know, we, we, we obviously need to track the invoices differently at, at, in town hall and, and for the project overall. But for this project, it's it's going to be so much simpler than the last one that I, I can't imagine that we're going to have a, a repeat of, of the issues that, that happened before. I, I just want to say in defense, and again, it's not any real criticism, but it was a, a combination of COVID, a contract extensions, you know, the contractor do, dropped dead. The other ones were pretty not so good, and they didn't perform. We had four contractors only one of them was good, and you know that that was really hard, and and that was no one's fault. Mm -hmm. The contractors really were just not good. Just my biggest. Um, and and it was and it involved the whole neighborhood. That was really the, what the problem was too. Yeah, it was terrible. I know, but yep, you know there's. There was a lot of issues there. There was also a lot of issues with the way a lot of the paperwork was handled, so it put a lot of stress on a lot of people. It did. And it just, you know, and I personally think the town of Deerfield's got to the point in time where we have to hire ourselves a planner, whether it be part-time or collaborative with another town such as like Hatfield, right. and somebody, hire somebody that is able to write grants. 
and both these individuals would be basically employees for the town of Deerfield and accountable to there, and they'd be able to do all the support work that goes with everything. You know, we, if nothing else, over the last couple of years, the fiascos we got with the planning board and the ZBA shows that we need a planner that understands these things and can consult with these people to make sure that we're doing things correctly. Um, it's just, you know, um, and, you know, I know people are going to say, well, we don't have the money for it. I, in my mind, you don't have the money not to. We don't have the money not to. And, you know, we're getting closer to getting the solar on the landfill. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had the, the uh, post agreement with the marijuana. Uh, these two things come together. That's more than going to help us pay offsets on this car. Because right now, you know, staff the staffing we have in this town to handle everything that's going on is solely inadequate. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, we don't have the space here for a lot of different offices, but I think we've got to try to think of things, start thinking outside the box and doing things. I don't care if we have to throw up petitions in here yeah. and put, find put people, yeah, but you know, we've got to do something. We've got to keep on going forward. We can't keep on doing things the way we've been doing it in the past because it's just, I mean, let's face it, over the last two years, I've never seen this town as divided as it is right now. And mainly that has happened because of poor planning. Well, we can, we can do a better job, for yeah, sure. We and can. Think, uh, and it's, and you know, I'm not saying, you know, it's the select board not planning or the planning board not planning, ZBA or anything like that. It's just that... We don't have somebody really looking at that whole picture that mm -hmm. we should have. You know, let's face it, we're part-time employees. Right. And everybody else other than, you know, Casey's office, the town clerk's office, uh, are full-time, you know, but we're part-time. We need somebody that can spend more time and get more focused. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, and there's a lot of things that are going to be happening in Deerfield. You know, we're going to be talking about the entertainment, municipal overlay, and stuff like that. All those things we need a planner to help us with. Mm -hmm. And, I think and we also need somebody that we can hire that there's a lot of grants out there that we're just not getting because we're just not, don't have anybody that's focused on it. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I think the planning board is also leaning that way of looking for that support, looking for I that do. coordination. Yeah. And, and I know that and, you know, sorry, the planning board should have support. Yeah. And, and you know, and, but I know that our staff is just cannot and the, the and bandwidth. I'm, and I'm looking at that support. And you know, I also kind of a believer that you know, when things are coming up with our planning board or ZBA, our building commissioner should probably be at the meetings. Yep. Um, and just, on it. just you know rearrange his time frame so some of that can happen but you know that's i know that wasn't originally part of his job it was support of those two boards but you know we've got to have more support because you know well we have the big projects that we're trying to do yeah. um connected community initiative that we just came up with that name yeah. but we need to pull the commons group together, the, yep, yep. the the Leary Lot project, yep. the senior housing, there's all kinds of stuff that needs yep. to be pulled together. I agree with that. This is a beautiful community that we have. Okay. And we've got to make sure we keep on enhancing it and not pedaling backwards. And you know, um, you know, and I know the M V P grants have done wonders for us over the years. Um, and but, you know, you know, the last year, there was right. so many different factors that caused problems for us. But it's, you know, I think we're getting to the point where we're getting past that consultant and getting into an employee at some point in time. That's just my opinion on it. So, Well, if we do some of the projects that we're going to have downtown, we have to. We have to. Because mm -hmm. there's just nobody so, that can marshal the you know, you know, it's, oversight. So too. for this particular project, I, I mean, if I can be assured that we are not going to burden our staff with more craziness, 
and we can make this thing happen, I would support it because I do believe this in it. This isn't item. construction, so I feel more comfortable no. with this. No, but it's just we'll still with, break. Is Chris going to handle the reporting on it? Or is he going to be handing it off to the, the town? So, well, I think Chris will be doing it. Well, let's get an answer on that. Yeah. I've asked so. So under under the contract, my responsibility has, has always been to do the monthly progress reports and the final report for the for the project, and and I've I've done those um, every month. I have never been late with them, um, and the, and the reports have all been accepted by the state. The financial management of the project is not something that the consultant can do. You know, I, I don't. I don't see the invoices coming in from other contractors and, and consultants. Um, so there has to be a tracking system set up in town hall to do that. And I think, you know, I can promise you that I'll, you know, I'll sit down with Casey and we'll work something out to, uh, to make sure that happens. And it, and it's set up in advance of the, the project, um, you know, billing cycles. Kick off meeting with me. Well, it, we would have to set something up prior to the kickoff and it has to be coordinated through the town accountant. So I haven't, I did put a call in to Andrew, Chris, but he hasn't called me back about a new invoicing tracking system. So I'll have to touch base with him about that. But he and I had talked about it a couple of weeks ago when we were finalizing things. So he's already told me that's going to have to happen. And I have a, I've already talked to the accountant about how we can do that. So I think we can manage that um, because we'll set things up within our own accounting system so we can segregate invoices for tasks. Um, the thing that's difficult is some of the requirements on the, on the MVP side, I think they may have relaxed task reimbursement requests. So that's a coordination we'll have to work through with Andrew. Yeah, and I, and I think we should invite Andrew to, you know, a kickoff meeting to, to make sure we go through all of those um, requirements and you know he did um, he did that the last time but I think we didn't really talk about financial management um, so I, I think there is a, a new invoice tracking um, approach that they've come up with that everybody has to comply with now and I, I got you know some some view of that at, at a previous meeting I just got to know that it's it's going to get handled for the money that we're spending. It, no it will. Who else is going to handle it? Well, that's what it I mean. I don't want to get lose somebody over it. You know, I mean, I, I, I'd write the program off, and, and there's a million other things to do. Well, but I, there are a million other things to do, but I think we can coordinate that. It's just there needs to be some commitment. And I actually wrote this into the, into the contract, that you and I talked about it, Chris. It's some commitment towards the end of, the reporting period to go over the administrative reporting with the consultant so that we are making sure things are tracked in the right path and presented in the manner that MVP wants to see. So I had written yeah. that in in the scope of work section of the contract, if you recall. Okay. Well, that makes sense to me. Okay. Else, no, no, I, I think this is pretty straightforward, so I'm not really worried about it. I'm very but worried about it. I, yeah, this is I just, simple compared to. Well, this is a lot simpler, but you know, here again, it's just like, you know, we we, we just got to keep moving forward, and you know. Grants are not free. Huh? No, nope, they are not, not free. free. That's no. what everybody needs to remember is the grant administration, the backbone of grant management is no. where it's time consuming for the staff. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just me, it's all the staff that are involved, including right. Chris. And Chris spends an inordinate amount of time communicating and with here again, it's, I give him credit for that. He I, does all those reports. I don't want to try to degrade anything that Chris has done for the town because no. he's done wonderful work for the town. I'm just saying that, you know, in my humble opinion, I think the town has to start thinking more forward and doing and getting, you know, I agree. Um, I agree. the planning and the grants and things. It's just we have wicked lot of stuff happening. Yes, and it's just you know another department head phrases it as we're a small town operating like a city yeah. because we're moving in that direction and yeah. so 
there needs to be some commitment that we need to make some changes administratively so that we can meet the workload. Yes, right. And I know people criticize me for saying that, but the workload in the office is substantial. It's immense. Yeah. And we've, it's immense. we've got to do something with the senior center, and you know this this is part of the plan. Don't take up grant. more time than we have. Yeah. We can't, we can't and, and grant. But grants are going to cost us money in the administration. I know. So we've got to figure out right. maybe yeah. set those no. steps in place first. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. So. Okay. All right. Are you okay with it? I am. If people promise me that we're not going to lose somebody over it, <laughs> I can't promise that. That's somebody else's choice. But I will do whatever no, I can to make I sure this works better. I want to make sure I'm that. I, 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 I will also do whatever I can to make sure it works better. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate that. Um, we just worry about Brenda. We do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. But Brenda, Brenda is. I know. Brenda is. She keeps us all together. Yes, I know. All right. I make a motion, then we approve this contract. Second the motion. Trevor McDaniel. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Hi, Hi Dave Wolfen. Thank you very much. Appreciate your Thank you listening. Your Thank you for the help coming to explain. Appreciate that very much. Oh, you're welcome. Have a good evening. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now we have the continuation of the body art. Oh, that's right. Yep. We did continue. Um, Trevor, did you uh, did you have a chance to I talk did. with Alex? I spoke with Alex uh, for for quite a bit today. Oh, good. And, um, oh, good. And we went over. Um, he explained what he changed, why he changed it, what his thinking is on that. Um, that he's still looking at things, but um, he well, seems very proactive in trying to update. Yeah, us I was just going to say that new, the microblading is new. Is new is keeps. Changing and yep. it's relatively new. And it wasn't in our Boston stuff, uh, no. but it is in Northampton, um, I think. No, 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 it wasn't oh, the Boston. That, yeah. No, the original, the original one in Northampton was outdated compared to the Boston one, but the Boston one we figured out really isn't as up to date as we thought. Right. So we're going to go back to the to the state original um, definition. And, and the requirements from Northampton. Yeah, because I was going to say, he, he said the state was a bit outdated. Yeah. So state's even out, outdated. more outdated originally. Right. But their definition is a better definition of microblading. Is more uh, for the microblading part. Yes, yeah. the, mic the microblading part was the only part that um, Meredith O'Leary, the um, health director in Northampton, what, what they did is they had a whole task group put together their... Um, body art regulations. And they actually were very cutting edge, very good statewide, and, and are the most copied statewide. If you look at anybody's body art, it's almost all templated off of Northampton's right. work in 2010. And the only thing that Meredith, because she's also a mosquito commissioner, so I see her um, at least once a month. And so we're kind of good friends. And um, so when I was talking to her about this, that we were just going to copy and paste from her. She said, great, the only thing that they have changed since 2010 and they've been still fiddling with it is the microblading because right. that it's is changing, it's it's changing and it's new and, mm -hmm. and they keep, and the microblading is like, uh, you know, your eyebrows, which is different Defining. than yeah. you're doing the eyeliner along the eye, eye right. which is your like most stringent, Thing is what you want, but the microblading is a little bit more loose because you're just yeah. literally tattooing on someone's eyebrow. So right. Potentially. Yeah. Correct. But, you know, the, you you got your guest um, tattoo artists, and mm -hmm. the, so that what are you going to require for them if they do the microblade? And there's all these things. So Alex actually did a lot of research and yep. called all these communities, yep, and we're so we're I think what we ended up with is the best currently. Perfect. And we can just going to have to update it. Yeah. No, I, it seems like he'll stay on it, and I, I yeah. feel pretty good about it. So, yep. 
So do you want to adopt it then as, as, um, as presented? So do you want us to read this again? No, I think it's already no, open, right? Yeah, no, we can just vote it. Alex, Alex mm -hmm. explained it. He sent, We're gonna... he sent an email. I forwarded it to yeah. you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I understand. What Carolyn just explained is essentially what would change. It adds some yep. microblading, and what he mentioned to me was we could put together some guidance documents once we've once we've yep. received right. yep. some inquiries about it. And he's going to make very sure that he checks all the applications and and works with the applicant to follow the guidance okay. and yep. regulations. I, my question was the procedure of the public hearing notice that. We've continued it, so we didn't have to open the hearing again, right? Yeah. Now we just need to vote to close the well, hearing and then discuss the issues. We need to ask public comment right. and, and, and ask we for public comment and all that. Yeah. We want to give public comment before we close the hearing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So is there any more comment from the select board? No. 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 So do we have any comment from the uh, public on this uh, body art? Let's see if there's any hands up. I don't. I don't see any hands up. Okay. Not seeing any hands up or hearing anything. Well, then I make a motion to close the hearing. I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. well, all those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfman. That's uh, 18. Do I hear a motion to adopt? Uh, make a motion to adopt the um, Deerfield Body Art establishment regulations. Go ahead. Can I ask for one cent friendly amendment? Sure. Mm -hmm. To an authorized um, office staff to make the appropriate correction so it meets our formatting requirements. In other words, to seal, making sure that we put the correct approval date, that sort of thing. Because this really is a reflection of Oh, it still has Northampton seal on it. Okay. So I was right. just wondering yeah. if you would. Oh, oh you know why? Because what um, we had already. Al Alex didn't have the um, Stamp. town of Deerfield seal. Right. So, but. Did he draw? I would consider that draw? miracle, but yeah. I just want to make sure yeah. everybody oh, understands look at that. that we wow. don't want to make it look <laughs> I the way it no. is. Yeah. It's we, normal. That's fine. Yes. It should be. It should. We need our town seal. I guess that so. friendly amendment. That's fine. I'll second it. Carolyn's still reading. No, no, no. I just yeah. wanted to make sure there was no other seal there. I don't get off to second something. You know, <laughs> not his chair. Not his chair. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Um, I, Carolyn Ness. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfman. Who was seconded? Uh, David. Seconded. David did. So I was looking to see you if there was a motion, right? No, Trevor did. I made okay. the motion. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, was... I just there was only this one seal that, um, yeah. he, he, but we do need to make sure everything is, yeah. Check. We'll just fix the seal and make sure we put in the approval date. And... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next thing on it is select board reports, announcements. So um, had a good meeting at the Stewart uh, monthly meeting, budget meeting, and project you know uh, construction meeting down there. The uh, it's looking great. They've you know cut the wall to the irrigation um, one of the old irrigation tanks, and they've uh, dug out for the second clarifier. That's pretty much. They got a little bit further to go on that. They might have it done already. They have the forms done for the um, for the grit. Um, grit container with a grit, mm -hmm. grit removal container. Yeah. Um, they've got the footings in for the headworks building. So um, there wasn't much we had to decide on. I think they're still working on some colors. Has the weather um, been really bad? Well, it's been good. I mean, they had that rain the other day, but they planned for it. They knew it was coming, and luckily we didn't get as bad as what everybody else did. But they they did notch a little bit and protected, and they okay. were talking about moving stuff around. The, um, Keith has been thrilled with the workers there. I, I'm so happy that Waterline Industries is our contractor for this job, and, and, and Dave Brickett's the engineering firm. They do a great job conducting the meetings and keeping on top of the, any change orders. We do have some change orders coming. It's on the agenda somewhere? Okay. 
so we do have uh, some change orders. They did find that, like, when they had to remove one of the um, concrete beds, they thought it was all one concrete bed, but the middle part was, like, enough to bury Jimmy Hoffa. Like, it was huge, so they had to, like, spend more time and stuff to dig that out. They also had some um, extra money to... Um, I wonder why that happened. I don't know. Nobody could figure out why there was that. I mean, somebody had to unload a truck of cement because it was a massive pile of cement they had to dig out that nobody expected. Um, and then they had to do some different borings through the walls, um, and they corrected all of that. And so there'll be a couple of change orders. There's another change order in the in our favor. So one of those things he was going to uh, just wipe out. So, But it's been on target, really good. Everything seems to be working very well there. So I'm uh, pretty, pretty happy with what's going on there. Um, the, I, you know, the construction work on the sewer pipes in DA is complete. Um, they passed the road. They're going to let it fly for the winter and probably in the spring um, or next, you know, next summer uh, repave because I think we have enough money left over from what they donated to do that instead of leaving a line down the road. They had just paved the road, so they want to clean it up. But it looks good right now. You can hardly tell it's there. But, it, you know, it may settle and stuff. So, so that project is, is good, and we really need to work on, like, what are we going to do with that plant? I mean, it's been back burner, but we really got to get started on figuring out what we're going to do with that. But that's, you know, m multiple meetings ahead. I, um, we just got to keep an eye on the infrastructure project because yes. we got, I mean, I think Dave is willing to put something together very quickly if, if we have the opportunity to put some, submit something. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, okay. And we have a new, um, uh, Jennifer Shero is, is leaving um, USDA. So so we're, we've got a new new gentleman. Um, I can't think of his name off the top of my head right at the moment, Michael or something. Or, I think it starts with a J. Yeah. Joseph, maybe. So, he, um, so we just got emailed from Jennifer on that transition, so he'll be involved with the meetings from now on. Um, I think that'll be a Good change and uh, should be fine. He'll be up up to speed on everything we're doing. Um, what, we, what we need to do is uh, just come come out and look at that plant. So he yep. has in the back of his mind that we're ready to go. We're yeah, and yep. you know we're organized. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of thing. For a sure. lot of it, especially if he's new, and yep. we're the only one out reaching to him, then yeah, maybe yeah. they'll will make a big difference. So I think you're right about it's that. Just, it's just you know it's a very personal. small group of people, and if you. Yep you know, are halfway nice to them, like in the fall, you know, in, in October, yep. mid-October. Yep. Come on out. Yeah. Let, you know, let's just give you a quick tour. Yeah. And, oh, it's so beautiful. And, yeah. You know, I'm but we got problems, you know. And, meetings and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So that's been going really good, I think. Um, you know what would be a good, a good thing? This is just a thought. Mm -hmm. Because um, I'm trying to make sure that when we do something with that plant, if we keep the plant, we need to make sure we're doing it, uh, the releases with the flows of Great River. So we could get him involved in sort of like a climate change thing and show mm -hmm. him, you know, yeah. how we're doing the river so we don't get ever into our permit violations because when right. it's so low flow, you know, there's too concentrated. Yep. So yep. we've got to coordinate when we do the releases. So that means a bigger tank or a holding tank or something right. to coordinate with their releases. Okay. So. Good. That's all I've got for the sewer stuff. Okay. Do you have anything for the select board? No. Um, um, we had a group uh, do analysis of the Congregational Church okay. this week. Um, they should have a price to us sometime later this week about what the costs are going to be. To get uh, working with yeah. Deerfield Academy and uh, local contractors. Uh, to uh, basically put in new handicap ramp, um, handicap bathroom, uh, I think four mini splits. Okay. Um, and um, maybe a little petition work here and there. Um, and just uh, sanding floors, replacing carpeting, things like that. Yeah. The... Uh, um, I, I know it's an expenditure, but I, I, 
personally think it's an expenditure that we have to make because I don't really think we're going to be able to get them back into that building, and we can't have them out in the tent. Right. So um, um, the, the building is actually, from the assessment for the people that went in there, is in better shape than what we were told. Good. Uh, the only problem with the building is actually the steeple. And, and the, the second floor of the of the church itself. Support of that floor in there. Yeah. So you can't use that second floor right. of the church, but yeah. that's you know, the only time I ever remember that being used, unfortunately, was during my mother's funeral. Oh. But the uh, um but you know, it's a historic building. Um I'm also working with John uh on the feasibility studies for the senior center. Yes. Um and I know I didn't talk to you folks first, and I probably should have, but uh, what I want to include with the feasibility study is gutting the old school where the senior center is now, reconstructing it, moving the town hall there, and the seniors here. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of our well, we connected we had as well. community right. initiative. Yeah. Yeah. Where we're trying uh, to draw we're all, all one stuff. floor here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, the, you know, in some ways easier um, and you know I just I just love the facade of that building and the looks of it the structure the, the bones of the building the bones are good it's the it's inside of it that are just cracked it really needs to be gutted yeah yeah so um, we you know a, and some sort of addition on we can put an addition yeah. onto it for and whatever for meeting rooms or whatever uh, but I mean these are all things you know part of the feasibility study is a feasible right um, but you know it's okay. just these are just kind of, you know, now that I'm awake most of the time instead of asleep during the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd love to have you involved to do it. And it's yeah, just, sure. uh, it's just, have it. you know, just working, working around it and looking at things and, um, you know, and just here again, it's just parts of enhancing the town of Deerfield. Um, yeah. You know, it's, of course, you know, I'm sitting back there and I'm having visions of that being the town hall and what it could be. I thought about that, too. Um, only because we've all thought of that. back when Moby Dick was a minnow and I was just a little <laughs> tower hopper, the, uh, my grandmother was town accountant and that's where her office was, was over there. Oh, no kidding. And uh, so, and the town nurse was there. I can remember going to the basement there and getting my polio shot. Wow. So that's how old I am. I still got the mark on my arm, <laughs> but it's just That's you know great, these are just things that we're just you. trying to look you at. know look at um, you know I'm getting pretty close to being a senior, so you know <laughs> thinking you about it. Answer the survey when it comes out. That's right. Yeah. I know. So it uh, it's just you know. I think, you know, the town has a lot to offer, and I think, you know, we should do. And, you know, um, I know I had John ask Casey to put another article on the warrant about uh, maybe we'll get there. setting aside some money just for that okay. right now. Well, um, we've, got just to, to get, we've got to get going on. And, so. you know, I even know. if we spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars 30000 I think it's money well spent right now. Any thoughts on the kitchen? Did they give any ideas on that? Yeah, the kitchen's feasible. Okay. They Just can take the gas out, put yep. the electric in. Perfect. You can't have any grease, so no yep. no pierogies, no kielbasa. Oh, what um, are we going to do? So uh, we shut can, it down. We can microwave it <laughs> or use the um, um, those new convection ovens they have. Yep. So sure. you can use all those. You just can't have that open flame yep. there. And it's just... Um, it's very usable. From what I'm told, the refrigerator is an excellent refrigerator. Uh, the dishwasher, I'm not sure about and stuff. But, right. uh, the plumbing for changing the restrooms is not going to be overly cumbersome because we're going to leave, well, there's three bathrooms now. We're going to leave two of them and convert a third. Okay. That's, right. that's the thought process right at the moment. So Good. That's good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. for that work? Um, Board of Health? Um, I just want to report that we have steady amount of cases every week. We do. But there is no community transmission as far as we can tell. Unfortunately, about a third of the cases are kids. Yeah. Um, 
so that's really sad, but that's our unvaccinated group, really. Right. So um, people just need to pay attention, but it is really households that have been traveling or done family events from out of town family or gone to family events out of town, and, and it's contained in the household. So our numbers are not reflective of really community transmission. Right. That's why we're not requiring mask mandates or, you know, we haven't shut down buildings or right. any of that stuff yet because everybody's behaving for the most part. They are. And you need to just keep layering with masks. Your, your first line of defense is your vaccination. And then your second line of defense is your is, is masks when you are in public areas that are, you know, confined and not enough airspace where the aerosols are going to build up. You know, and social distance about around non-household, your not household group, you know, that kind of thing. It's just being practical again because, um, and, and it's working. So please, if you are one of the unvaccinated, please get vaccinated. We as the, you know, Board of Health are committed to do um, a clinic for our younger kids, 5 to 12 year olds, as soon as we can. We do have um, a flu clinic scheduled for the seniors. Yep. On September 30th, 10 to 1, we the URL is coming out soon. We're going to be training everybody in the new platform, color platform. It's going to replace the prep mod. So we're having a training of our volunteers on um, September 14th. It's a Zoom meeting. Um, and what the September 30th is going to offer a high dose, regular dose um, flu, and we're hoping to have COVID. I've been beating up the FERCOG that we will have a separate URL so seniors um, over 65 can get their third Moderna because we're supposed to get approval for over 65 on September 20th and our clinic is September 30th. So it's two different exactly kinds of vaccine. Three, three doses is really what they're saying yep. now. And, and it's, and it's um, the, you can get the flu vaccine in one arm and your COVID in the other arm. It's yes. two different kinds of vaccine. It's the Moderna. So if you had received a Moderna through us, then you can sign up for the Moderna again. And like I said, we're really trying to make sure that's available. I have a question that others may have. Johnson & Johnson, you know, that's a one-shot deal. Um, and I wondered if other people had talked about a booster at some point on that, or if they're it's coming. That. It's coming. What they're doing is doing the research and the trials and all that kind of stuff. You know the. Yep. What What happened is you had Pfizer was approved first under right. the emergency, then Moderna, yep. then and J &J. then Jane. So there's like 70 or 80 days difference between, between each cycle. Yes. So um, the update on Johnson Johnson will be coming. But um, right now, you, if you are immune compromised, you can get your third shot right now. But um, I believe after September 20th, that the latest is that if you're over 65, you can get your third shot. Which so those were the earlier. Ones. Those were the early ones. Yep. And, okay. and so then October 3rd, which is Sunday, is our all-age one. So we will have, you know, regular flu shots, kids' flu shots. And then hopefully, um, if you were a first responder or over 65, you can still get COVID that day too. I'm, I'm working very hard to make sure that we have COVID and, um, you know, the Moderna vaccine for COVID um, that day okay. available. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I just want to report, we're squeaking by this year on our mosquitoes, even though it's been the oh, rainiest, third rainiest year on record since 1790. Uh, 1952 and 1955 have only been the rainier year. However, it's been the hottest year on record as well as being rainy. So we have really good mosquito conditions. But Kevin, I meant to say thank you, Kevin, earlier that Kevin has been whipping out those dunks. Every time they get washed away, he's been putting them in and it's working because our catch basins are West Nile disease free. This is the second year in a row, even though we have these gross conditions, we have no West Nile in town Fantastic. so far. Fantastic. This is, it's up and down the valley, but not in Deerfield. And, and, and it's really, it's Kevin. Yep. Kevin is keeping us safe and we're, the mosquitoes dropped off. There was so much rain last week it dropped off, but then we've had yeah, the heat and they yeah. rebounded and oh my God. 
and we're probably going to have at least two or three more weeks of wicked bad mosquitoes because the evenings are still warm. So. Yep. But as soon as it gets chilly, they're going to start dying, and then we'll have the frost, and that'll be the end of it. And hopefully, we'll have made it through with no West Nile disease for a second yeah. year in a row. That'll be very good. Yep. That's very good news, really. Yeah. yeah absolutely. All right. Okay. The next thing in discussion is special town meeting warrant. Okay. So, pursuant to what David said, I did add an article to the warrant. Um, requesting funding for a sum of money for repairs to the church. Um, and I just want to let everyone know that Brenda's on vacation, but he did turn free cash in for certification. Yes. Um, there was some indication that DLS might not jump on that, so I'm going to check check with her about that when she gets back from her vacation. Um, but so what you see here, and I don't have article numbers in here yet, but what you see, it hasn't substantially changed with the exception of that article that was added. Okay. So we I have because it's special town meeting. Yep. We talked to the finance committee about that last week, mm -hmm. Trevor and I. Yeah. It's a yeah. different percentage when it's special town meeting yep. as opposed to annual. Oh, Only okay. two-thirds at annual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's unanticipated fiscal year bills 2020, 2019, 2019, and 2018. And that 2018 bill is a $350 bill for, um, we think it was. It was for the barn. For the barn near you would have. Yep. Paul Alice was looking to do something with it, I think, and we had it appraised. Yeah, and so this bill got lost in translation. I only mm -hmm. found out about it after the same surveyor did the work for the Oxford property. Mm -hmm. So okay, that's the first four articles yep. as they stand right now. We also have a vote of the summary appropriation of the June annual town meeting warrant article number five that was because... A there's a, there needs to be a correction in the amount of the funding sources. So what you see, and I discussed this with both the accountant and council, we're going to give that information out as part of the warrant. So what the funding amounts should be, yep, as opposed to what they were. What they were. It was just an error and typo. It, it, it was a clerical a error. Copy and paste over of, yeah. a, of a table at last meeting. Yep. Yeah. So, so that's to that the new numbers. article. Okay. And then the article that follows the omnibus budget article is the new one, which is the South Deerfield Congregational Church Building Repairs. And I put, so one thing that everybody might not have noticed is instead of putting in a vote to transfer from free cash, I put in language to transfer from available funds or otherwise provide. It could be any fund. We, yeah. So it, it notifies the town residents that we plan to make either a transfer or some provision to fund these articles. Right. But those sources aren't settled at the moment, right. which is allowable. Okay. So the next article is the gender neutral language for yep. the select board in the zoning bylaws, which we passed over at annual town meeting because we didn't have the hearing process completed. Right. And there's only one potential change to this, and I'm waiting to hear back from council about it. Um, the words related to the non-gendered reference is something that Lisa put in. I don't understand what. It, I don't know. It's it's different from the. It's slightly. That's the language. It's slightly different from our last article. So I have to make sure that the well, planning board is advised that Lisa would like that added. <laughs> there's individuals that do not identify. Oh, 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 oh. That's oh, what oh, it is. Oh, that's, oh. that's one of the reasons she's putting it in there. But it wasn't they something like that we've noticed. They like to be referred to as they or them. Correct. But then the select board? Because we're changing it to select board. Right. Related to the non-gendered reference. So what right. it, anything, and this this is, it is a non -gendered editorial reference. or clerical adjustments I related to the non-gendered I just want to make sure people know reference. that I'm not pushing this. No, no, I'm no, pushing no. it. I know. It's actually, yeah. We know the Absolutely. reason the treasurer had asked me and the two of us came to you 
because to of our loans. Yeah. It has to be USDA loans. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. it's absolutely true, but it's yeah. just, I, it's not something, I mean, I, it's not something. No, don't feel, me. no. Yeah. It, this is she up. never had a problem with any of that. Nope. Didn't. No, I didn't. She didn't. It's too late. Yeah. Yep. You didn't. It's time for the change. It is. <laughs> so, we've so had so many years. It's not the majority. Yep. Um, we then have the zoning bylaw amendment frontage for municipal facilities on town owned lots. Yep. And there was a change to that. We discussed this with the planning board. You all did. Mm -hmm. And then Trevor and I discussed it with finance committee at their meeting last week when they started to go over the warrant. The change was to allow a minimum 50 foot frontage for town municipal facilities in residential, agricultural, and small business. So CBRD and C1 districts only. Oh, yeah. And that was the language that planning board that allowed, settled on. And that allowed us to do the Leary lot. Correct. Yes, because we, oh, none of us realized the Leary lot wasn't the Central right, Village. Central right. Village, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So and then the other. their hearing for that is coming up on Monday if anybody wants to attend. Okay. Um, uh, I'll do, do that. that again. Just to okay. represent us if you want. Thank you. Um, I'll be on vacation, so yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> no, I, I talked to Anna Lee and the planning board last time, and, and they were fine with it. That's great. Yeah. And, so and I, and I said it was fine. my fault. I, I just really didn't know that the Leary lot wasn't included. I know. We looked at it the next day. I looked at it with Jennifer and Bob and went, that's not the right district. <laughs> so that's why we asked. That's no, I just forgot. You know, I mean, we didn't know the line was Conway Street. I did at one time. But I didn't it, just, it didn't. it didn't register. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so that was one notice language. The hearing is Monday. Yeah. Um, the plan. next zoning article that we have was the bylaw amendment to make a change in the floodplain district section of 4300 to remove a reference to a section that's been removed yep. in, the, in the Code of Massachusetts regulations. Mm -hmm. So it says the removal is currently section 744 is a strike through and request. Tourism. This is the and then the list. third one, so this is another article, is the tourism overlay district. And there's some. Did we, did we get the other map? The, yeah, or is that got to be the other map? Parcels? needs to be amended for Monday, uh, as long as it's okay with you. I, I think it's important to put in the. Uh, it was brought up at the Finance Committee that uh, Leary Lot. Leary Lot and the uh, BBC be added to that district. So if that can happen, I'm good with that. I don't what know if you need a vote north? from us. What about the north? Well, we're, we'll get to what it about? in a minute. Um, north Main Street. So the North Main Street lot as well. That was a question that came up. I don't, I don't think we were interested in expanding. The what? The North Main, the former That's really municipal now. Um, I don't think that means. Oh. I, I could be That's wrong. Closer. Is there a reason why it would be? I'm just asking. It came up as a question. Um, no. I, I, I just wanted to add the Leary lot in the BBC, and Gary was thrilled to death, and so and the only he one. wants to work with us. And that had come out of our conversation with the Finance Committee last week, Trevor. So yeah. um, I told him if it passes in October, of course, that we we'll be um, reaching out to him. And it was perfect timing because he's really, really busy this month. But, oh, okay. Oh, uh, sure. You know, yeah, after yeah. mid-October, he'd be fine. Okay, And Great. so we could work on our connecting community initiative on the Leary lot and get going on the ARPA funding and all that Great. kind of stuff. Okay. So in terms of the tourism overlay district, the planning board has a hearing about that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's on the 13th, That's right? on the 13th. Right, Annalise? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll shut up in a minute, I promise. Um, yeah, Monday. Okay, good. So, yes, that's on, that's on Monday. And these were the text in here includes what was noticed for the hearing. We are right. not making any more changes until after those hearings. Fine. For these articles that are right. Did you include right the map, yep. is the map included or do you, because we can add them, that's being less restricted. I we can add them at the meeting, right? At the hearing? No, we have to do, we have to settle this and I sent Annalie a note. Well, Annalie knows. Friday, so Annalie, I'm gonna tell them and then you can chime Please. in. 
So what Annalie and I talked about, and we talked to council just to make sure we were right. So whatever we notice, we need to identify all the lots that we think are going, we would present to town meeting. So Annalie called a meeting for planning board on Friday. Those lots that we were just mentioning, Annalie, are the two lots that we want to add. So at their discussion on Friday, they'll settle on the lot that they want to identify and the language of the article. The notice will go out next week and they'll decide on their hearing date of either the 29th or the 30th, whatever they decide. Um, and what time is, what the time is on that Friday? one? Six o'clock on Friday. Six okay. o'clock on Friday. Okay. But it will be a very cursory meeting basically to okay. set the date for the public hearing. I think essentially Perfect. the lots that we discuss on the 13th with the public hearing for the verbiage will really probably be the lots that we settle on. I yeah. expect. Okay. Sorry, I missed your hand, Annalie. Um, uh, so for a reason. This was something that the council had advised us of after she read the last version of the warrant because yeah, we had needed the map. We, we needed to modify the map to include that new zone. Great. So that's what this article um, it's to amend the town of Deerfield zoning map to create the tourism overlay district and identify the lots that are affected. Okay. So, if the planning board approves adding those two other lots, then we'll frame it that way for the notification. Okay. And then I I said to Annalie, just have them decide whether they want to do it on the. I'll be there, Annalie. Okay. Um, have them decide whether they want to do it on the 29th or the 30th, whatever their pleasure is, the planning board to hold the hearing. Um, but we will have to include the language that they settle on on Friday. Okay. Right. Okay. Proposal. So what else would you like to add, Annalie? I have a question about the other warrants, the, the other warrant that is being added. So if you need to continue with that, or I just actually in general, just interested in what the process is for adding um, warrants, adding articles to the warrant. Certainly, as you know, with the planning board, we have a public hearing um, when we go through and we get input from the community. And I know there are a lot of different committees boards that are looking at, um, you know, what to do with our various properties. And I'm a bit concerned about the warrant that's going on now as much as I think uh, David makes a wonderful case for it. I think it may be a bit premature and not giving perhaps due respect to the other committees that are trying to pull together this project. It just might be a bit premature. But the real question is, what's the process for adding, are you talking, adding? Are you talking the senior center, Annalise? Correct. For uh, the, well, for the ta the church renovations. Right. So um, the select board has the. Uh, the select the, board warrant. Yeah, the select board has the sole authority to add or take off any, any warrant article. And then um, it, unless they have something to do with zoning, you know, we would. Or, or planning or something like that, we would go before another board. But, but because this is financial, we could choose to put it on and then, you know, we'll have a meeting about it and see, see if people want to want to go ahead with it. Um, but it's not, it's, not, it's, it's unlike a, like a, a zoning bylaw or a bylaw change or something like that where you have public hearings on them. Um, we could add kind of any, anything to it. Generally, so I'll give you an example of an annual town meeting warrant. We usually will open it. I'll ask the board to open it and we, it, that's a longer process. And usually something like if there's something for senior housing, for instance, if they want to do something, they'll need to go through a prior process to notify everybody that they may have a capital request for, for senior housing that they would want to see on, on, a, on a warrant. Um, so there's other processes in the background Usually when we pull together a special town meeting warrant, it's dependent on what the, the critical items are that were identified. A lot of the warrant is planning board articles. So we were notified through our staff collaboration that there were things we needed to put on. Um, the last, that funding request came via a member of the select board for discussion tonight. So I drafted it, I put it on there. The board will take some sort of a vote tonight to confirm the warrant. And then I'm, I'll get to it at the end, but there's a, I'm gonna ask them to follow a certain process because the warrant has to be posted next week. 
and your hearings don't end until after Monday. So we have to coordinate inputting any language changes that would happen for your hearing um, after you guys vote next week on the three zoning articles that are before you. So there's a coordinate, sometimes a, small, a special town meeting warrant is, there's a shorter collaboration time, a shorter time to pull everything together. Um, and I had notified finance committee. I haven't, they're gonna yell at me. I haven't talked to them about this particular funding article because it came in yesterday and the board hadn't even talked about it either. So I'm sure there will be flack next week, but I, I generally do bring these things before the board so they can talk about them at a meeting and have their confirm whether they think this is something that should be on a warrant or not on a warrant. So it, it's a not quite as robust as annual town meeting and several versions of the warrant go out. So because we had some conflicting versions, Lisa and I made a decision to not make any more changes until after this meeting and so that we can make sure that we have the right information in the warrant. I, I can I Oh, I just want to say the board is supportive of David and John's efforts with the senior center. And if the finance committee has a problem, we hadn't even had a chance to look at it, but it's through his work that we, you know, we need to do something before cold weather. And so, Anna Lee, this is just a temporary situation to get the seniors into a better environment for a short period of time. This isn't a permanent situation. Uh -huh. You know, oh, okay. we have, we're, we fully appreciate what you and other folks are doing right now, and that will be the end result. But right now, we're looking at, you know, fall's coming, winter's coming. They're in a tent right now. I don't think they can go back into that building and what the alternative was going to be. I and it looks like for Thank short you. money, we can get them into the church. I understand. Thank you. I didn't understand that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Jennifer Remillard has a question. Oh, Hi. Jennifer. I just, I have a question on the same thing, if it's okay. Um, I just didn't hear before. Um, so the monies that's being requested in this particular warrant for this particular issue is just to get the seniors into the church, not for gutting the schools or the, the old grammar school, the current existing building. Okay, sorry, sometimes it's been hard right. to hear certain things, so I just wanted to ask for clarification. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yep. Yep, you. Go ahead. Could I make a clarification? It was gonna be in my report, yeah. but since it's come up, two people have asked the question. Um, can John you just talk is a little bit louder, Casey, just so people can hear it? Because oh. I think there was some questions. So John Pacherk had worked with TBAC, the Building Advisory Committee, and a couple of other folks. We were trying to receive some funds utilizing DLTA funds at the COG and our own funds. We put a capital project request together last year to do a needs assessment and a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. And so the needs, from a permanent perspective, Jennifer, the needs assessment is a survey that we would send out to the seniors of the three towns to get some input about what they would like to see in terms of senior services, and then utilize that information to figure out, to do a feasibility study of how to, how to use the spaces that we have available. And it started out of that building advisory evaluation of the five buildings. So for purposes of just a side note, John's working, he's gonna get in touch with UMass Boston. So, and I'm gonna get in touch with the COG about dealing with the DLTA funding source. So we're coordinating moving forward with that. Thank you for saying that because I guess my um, my previous perception or understanding had been that that needs assessment was already conducted. So I remember uh, the talking of the $30,000 or so being put aside or, or what not needed for that. I think it was 30,000 um, in order to do that. So that was that was not done, that's in process. Right. It's in process. Right, yep. Okay. Between Thank what's you. coming from the COG and that need assessment, we have approximately 43,000. Great. Get that. Thank, thank you for sharing that information, Casey. No problem. So, um, so the tourism overlay, the language that you see now is the language that will be discussed at the hearing. Um, 
and I did I did have a conversation with counsel and you know within the four corners of that article if it's non substantive if there were changes that are not substantive we we could probably be okay with it um, I don't know that there would be many things I don't know what the public's going to say about it so I'll be interested to hear what happens afterward so the, the article that follows that is the article that you will be discussing on Friday with other members of the planning board and that's the actual zoning map um, I will ask you guys to add those those two lots per this conversation with the select board so that when the notice goes out we have to have those lots identified which is what you and I had conversed about in the email so I have all we have to do is add that the two lots the maps and lot references for that and I've also asked Ryan Clary up at the COG to draft us a zoning map so that you we have something to include to show people so it's got pretty colors on it because <laughs> he does a really good job with that so that's what that article is coinciding with the overlay district itself the verbiage that Annalee mentioned no it'd be very helpful if Ryan's sitting down it wouldn't take him much effort because he'd have all the lots there but if he could do you know the original zoning so map and then the overlay district, separate overlay district. So all the planning board and the select board had updated um, floodplain overlay marijuana district. I think it's all done. Um, and and then um, the original underlaying one, just so we can have it in our notebooks, okay? Notebook size. I don't mean big ones. I mean ones that we can have for reference. Because if I had had that reference, I would have realized that the Leary lot wasn't in the Center Village District, as a, you know, it jogged my memory. So it would be really nice to have him just do that real quickly. He might even already have it. And I'll give I think we it. already have it, but I'll check. I think just he did the update after we got approval for marijuana. Okay. Which included, which also had... Well, I think it would be really helpful if the... Planning board, each planning board member had their own little packet, and we had a copy ourselves, okay? Because it's getting confusing, all the stuff that we're doing. Yeah. Or, at least, to be at, or at least a screen share. Yeah. yeah, well, we need to be looking at the whole downtown thing again. I mean, that's part of what we're doing. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so... The next article, and this is another one that Planning Board has a hearing on on Monday, right, Annalie? Yes. So this next article is the solar energy system, mm -hmm. and it's a full replacement of the solar energy bylaw because the current, the bylaw that was voted at annual town meeting has not been approved, and the Planning Board, in consultation with Chris Curtis, is recognize some things needed to be addressed, some changes needed to be made. Am I right, Annalie? Yes. It hasn't been approved so they, from the AG's office? It has not been approved by the AG's office. So it's after some consultation with, with the town clerk and council, we suggested to the planning board that this be a full replacement. Okay. It will solve any numbering problems, and yep. it will also yeah. outline some of the, the terminology that was Okay. that was caught. And so we did have a conversation. The, Denise and Annalie went to the finance committee meeting on last Thursday and had a conversation with them. And we and planning board members invited finance committee to come to the hearing on Monday. So there were some questions about some of the terminology, but what's here should be what's substantially voted, I would think, right? Yes, yes, just uh, primarily as town meeting requested, um, we've done a few definitions in particular for small scale solar and otherwise it's clarifications and some tables that hopefully make things a little bit simpler. Yeah. And the one thing that we requested, and it was actually something that town council caught, was in the municipal solar energy system that we add, and she's, I've been told this is okay, Annalie, 
that we mm -hmm. add in that definition, a solar energy system that is owned by or located on land owned by the municipality. Yes. Because we do have the landfill project and we don't own the system, but we're leasing the land to potentially build, put that system on. So Lisa thought that was a smart move if we were making a change. And it's within the four corners of the article. So that's my suggestion. And right. I think I sent it out to you, but if I didn't, yell at me. So that's the solar bylaw, and like she said, there's changes in the tables, and I think Chris had a change to strike seven and eight, the two notes that were stricken, and, and changed that language just a tiny bit, and I talked to Lisa about it, and she's okay with that, I think. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. So it's a, it's a reference to change how it looks. The only thing that might be an issue is the amendments to the existing article definitions. And so I'm going to ask her about that. And that was in the latest language that Chris sent out. This was the reason that we stopped sending out versions because there were too many things we were getting confused. She and I were both getting confused. So after Monday, <laughs> we'll send out another version <laughs> because we'll have to pull it together, not only for publication, but for our own reference so that the select board can sign it. So the reason I spent a little time going over this and I wanted Annalie to talk to you guys a little bit about it is because I want to know if the board thinks they anticipate any other changes besides the ones that were requested yesterday and the what we just what I just outlined. Nope. I'm okay. Yep. So I did talk to Lisa about this. We do have a tight time frame to get this posted. It has to be signed by the 15th so it can be posted yep. no later than the 17th, 17th yep. to comply with the 14-day requirements. Mm -hmm. So if the board has no other changes, I would respectfully request that the board approve this this warrant conditionally on number eight. with the clerical allowance to number I'll number yep. once this once we had a chance to talk about this I was going to do the numbers after yep. that. No I'm good. So I would suggest that the board conditionally approve this warrant subject to the incorporation of the finalized language for solar tourism overlay zoning map changes and the frontage for municipal facilities that will result from the hearings next week. Now I must caveat that with the overlay, the zoning, the zone, the overlay zone language. That has to be what's decided on Friday because we don't have time right. to wait until the 30th or the 29th. So sure. that would be that language. So it has to be substantially complete, Annalie. That's why I sent you an email and tried to coordinate that so it, so we could get it done as soon as we could because that was the caution from council. That motion got too long, but yes. So it was so a motion. Moved. I have so it written. I'll second it. Thank I'll you. Second All right, good. Moving on. <laughs> okay, uh, the only question I have, Casey, is on the article for from the church. Do we have to put a dollar amount? We don't. We don't. So what you can do is a sum of money. So when we know we, we need to put a funding article on, but we yeah. don't know exactly what it's going to be, we notify the town that we will be requesting a sum of money. And in the motion, we identify what the sum is. Okay. And one of the reasons that I wanted to be clear that I notified you that I changed the language for yeah. transfer for yeah. funding yeah. for it. Yeah, raise and appropriate, right? No, no, but other or otherwise provide. Yeah. So, so transfer from available funds. Or yeah. so fund that we have free cash already. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so here's, here's my other yeah. caveat. We don't have any free cash yet. Um, we don't have free cash yet, so we need to yeah. be aware that if we don't have free cash, and this is the question that you and I remember from the Finance Committee meeting, yeah. the request came up, well, if we don't have free cash, are we going to pass over all these articles? And I'm hoping we will have free cash, but I would also hope that we wouldn't pass over these articles. So the right. reason I framed it as transfer from available funds or otherwise provide mm -hmm. That way we can structure the motion so that once we know whether free cash is available, we may have to make some adjustments. And I will yeah. warn you, and this isn't going to go over well, um, but 
for purposes of building repairs or something, we may want to consider utilizing a different funding source like a stabilization account. Mm -hmm. I don't know that Finance Committee will be amenable to that, but I, I want to put it out there as a cautionary comment. Or no. we could just ask them for reserve transfer. We could. Uh, we could ask town meetings not, to approve something not, like that. We're not asking for a huge amount of money. We don't know what it's going to be yet, so that's why I put yeah, it on. All right, we'll, we'll figure John that and out I talked about that. He's like, can so. we do a sum? I said, yeah, we can do a sum. Over the next week or so, okay. we can. So hopefully so. by next week, we'll have more information. Yeah, you seconded. So. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Yes, we have a warrant. We do. So once I finalize this tomorrow, I'll add the article numbers and stuff. Once I do that, I will send yeah, it out and that'd be great. try to get in touch with Julie and explain it. Okay. Um, and then, so I'm on vacation next week. Good for you. Who granted that? Yeah, wait a minute. You granted that? I don't Where know. No one's at vacation. Week? What? Uh, yeah, if I'm you, actually leaving, too. You're actually not even you have, around? Um, didn't you just go to Block Island the other phone. day? She's going to flex her phone. <laughs> For two days. If you have a, a, a sheet, we, we can sign that. So that's what I was going to do. I was going to have um, Jennifer put that together on Tuesday. Yeah. So you can sign it. And just oh, okay. what I want her to do is put it together, send it to council. Council can do a final review. And then she'll get it together for Barbara. And Barbara will tell her how many copies she needs oh, so that good. you guys can come in and sign at your convenience. Okay. And maybe could I ask you for a motion to sign at your convenience once the warrant's complete? Yes. Make that yes, motion. I may make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Great. Um, right there. Thank you. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is the uh, PBMA Oldfield Craft Fair. Woohoo! Yeah, so this went to the wrong email, Carolyn. <laughs> That's what happened. That's what you happened. Because <laughs> I swear, I looked through my email and Jennifer did too, and we couldn't oh, find we it. It was my old okay, email. Right. So Jennifer uh -huh. talked to um, Tim, and he sent it along, and we have time to get it all set. We have the letter prepped. So if you guys approve it. I'll make the motion to waive the fee and approve the Old Deerfield Craft Fairs for Cumpsick Valley Memorial Association uh, Craft Fair for September 18th and 19th. Um, yes. I'll second that. Great. I have been in conflict. I'm in conflict. It's in con, uh, contact with Tim, as has Dick. Great. Who, you know, since June, we've been talking about yeah. this. They mm -hmm. were late. Um, June was late when he submitted this. They normally submit, you know, like yeah. in the spring. They've been waiting to see what's mm -hmm. going yeah, on. Yeah, they were. They wanted us to have to consult with oh, us, yeah. and then, okay. you know, so we've been doing back and forth how to Thank you. make it safe. The uh, the public hours are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, followed by a half hour breakdown. Um, there is um, yeah, this is the 18th and 19th, and Memorial Street will be closing at 6 a.m. to 6:30 p.m. So you know. Okay. Next. I remember the first one they had up there. I was working cruiser. Oh yeah. We got up there. They hadn't requested closing the street. We got up there and I said, we're not going to allow traffic to come through here. Right. Because one car that had come through. Yeah. I said, no, this isn't going to happen. It's too much. We, clo we closed the street down. I made the motion. I made the motion. Carolyn seconded, I think. One of the two. Something like that. Something like that. I got, I got, the motion was made and it was seconded. And we All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolf. Uh, next is, uh... I think I put something out of order, but I've been through mine so many times, it might be that I just... Throw something out of it. Okay. All of our okay. So, the formal vote of a one voting precinct. If you look next oh, to you, David, right. there's an explanation that Barbara uh, it looks provided. Like we, our population dropped because all my kids moved out of town. <laughs> Uh-oh. Great. <laughs> my household okay. is... My household is down to one. You have a motion, you said? Or? Yeah, I'll make the motion. Oh, you have a I motion. I think I wrote it out for oh, you. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a um, we have a a population decrease, but we're still unfortunately over five thousand. Of course. Oh. And this is a census 
requirement. You do it every time you finish it. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. But I can't say that word. Okay. All we needed to do is just see a few more people left. <laughs> it gives us a whole other category. Yep. Well, I think she wrote the motion for you, and then she right. needs you to sign the document. Any further discussion? All those in favor? You've got to say the motion. Okay. So, oh, you want to read it? Oh, where? Oh, did she put it? We're going to have one precinct. We're not going to have one in the old different so grammar school anymore. Pursuant that we to haven't Mass had General for Laws, Chapter 54, Section 6, our town wishes to stay one precinct and hereby request the Secretary of Commonwealth to prepare a single precinct map on our behalf. Massachusetts General Law required towns to divide into convenient voting precincts after each federal census. Uh, see Mass General Law, Chapter 54, Section 6, the Board of Selectmen of every town. Less than 6,200 inhabitants may on their own motion or shall, when so directed by the town meeting, and the Board of Selectmen of every town having precincts or 6,200 uh, more inhabitants shall divide the town into convenient voting precincts. So that's my motion. And the official population is 5,090. Wow, down. go down. Well, 5,125. Five, yeah. Um, I will well, December the would be 91. We're going to give another one. Yeah. Good. Keep them coming. Um, I'll second. Or, so, second. Really? I second. You second it? Really? Yeah. We're, we're getting late here. You haven't paid for grandchildren yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I would love to. I cannot <laughs> wait. But i got a ways to wait. Um, yeah, you hope so. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> All right. Either way, man. You this never is know. getting late. It is getting late. <laughs> for Caleb. All okay. those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Caroline Ness. I, Dave Wolfen. Okay. So we got our approval girls' night out at Yankee Candle, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Make that motion. I second that. This is for, um, I think, the one day liquor license. It is. Yeah. It is. Not beer. Oh. Um, Beer and wine. Okay. Yes, oh, beer and wine. Yep. All right. Any further discussion? Nope. nope. All those in favor? I, I Carolyn Ness. I Trevor McDaniel. I Dave Wolfram. That'll be on um, September 16th. Yep. Yeah. Then we have the Celsius Wastewater Treatment Project. Oh, these are the change orders. So these are the potential change orders. I haven't yep. gotten finalized copies. So Trevor mentioned this earlier. Um, what you have are the potential change order details. I would ask that the board approve the potential change orders and authorize signature once the final documents are available. Yep. So I'll make a motion to approve the proposed change orders. I'll do two, one at a time. So one, first one um, is for four thousand one hundred fifty-nine dollars and sixty-three cents. Uh, this is for uh, the demoing of that fourteen foot by 14 foot by four inch, four feet thick uh, concrete slab with a hydraulic jackhammer labor and timesheet. Everything's documented here. Um, so I'll do that one first. Second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Um, I, Carolyn. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfen. Thank you. The second one, I'll make a motion to approve um, a change order for wall penetrations. Various wall penetration types are modified and one sleeve was eliminated. So there was some um, original scope was credited at 19,000. The revised scope was $31,661.34. So the, the change order total is $12,586.04. Um, I will second that. And these are really for, and, and we have maps of all the different sleeves and wall penetrations they've changed or adjusted. So, mm -hmm. all those um, in favor? Um, I, Carolyn. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolf. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed that they've had so few change orders. Oh, yeah. They're, They're doing, doing a great job. They're really doing I know. a great job. I'm so uh, you know, for this magnitude of this project. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. yeah. No, they're doing a really good job in keeping track of everything, and then they're, you know, there was a, again another change order, but they just they just ate, they had enough covered in the bid that they didn't um, end up charging us more money for it. They covered the louvers that they were going to purchase, so 
they didn't have to deal with that. So that I mean that kind of work is great. Really appreciate that. So here you're going to authorize to sign the. So I'll make company. a motion to authorize Casey Warren to sign the um, change orders when they come in for yep. her designate. I would you're on vacation. If I'm on vacation. <laughs> you're on vacation. Um, I'll second that. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Hi, uh, Carolyn. Daniel. Hi, Dave Wolfson. Right, Thank you. Thank you. Ever, no, yeah. oh. I didn't realize I didn't have a black pen. What's that? I said I didn't realize I didn't have a black pen. No. I only have a green. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Be colorful. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to be inclusive. You know? It's almost time for the Christmas movies on Hallmark. Yeah. yeah. Middle of October. Yeah. Oh. So this was the. Um, so that's the notice. The next item is the notice to intent or in, of intent to purchase the street lights. Mm -hmm. We the audit is substantially complete. We are coordinating with EverSource because, and I have some information. Eversource has a grant program that we would like to take advantage of that would actually give us some money toward installation of new fixtures. Right. We have to get moving on it because the return it has to be done by and by November. Okay. Great. And so what I've been doing is working with the auditor group, Light Smart Energy Consulting. Mm -hmm. Yep. They are, I talked to George on Friday after I've talked to Tim Simmons and um, a couple of other folks, including Green Communities, and Green Communities has given us our blessing, their blessing, yeah. to what we would do is we would utilize, we have grant funds set aside to purchase the streetlights. If we can utilize the Eversource grant, it will save us some money on, on our grant, mm -hmm. and we could possibly repurpose that. Good. There's only one hiccup, and I'm trying to get George Woodbury to work it out because we still have the development off of Sugarloaf Street, but the streetlights haven't been installed, so we're right. trying to work that out. I was talking and to Kevin about that, trying to get them to move to LED in there instead of what we typically have. So the whole purpose of converting to streetlights is we, we do this. I mean, George actually can find us a vendor that's off the state contract that has the LEDs that he suggests Okay. so that we can get those within 30 days. Once we send this out, the next thing is the purchase and sale agreement. Yeah. And the purchase and sale agreement, the reason we have to finish the audit is because it identifies the exact number of fixtures, which means we identify the exact amount of money. Right. So Lisa's reviewed it. I've okay. talked to our rep from Eversource. We have to send this first. Okay. So what I was going to ask the board to do is authorize David to sign this notice, notice of intent to purchase. Mm -hmm. And once I talk to George and have coordinate Everyone between here. him and Esther in at Eversource. We should have a purchase and sale agreement ready for you folks relatively quickly. So yeah. my question is, well, and first, first I'll make a motion to um, to authorize Dave Wolfram to sign the purchase and uh, the notice of intent to purchase street bike to Eversource. Uh, I will second that. Very exciting. Yeah. Any further discussion? No. Yeah. All those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Dave Wolfen. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this so, is the first thing we went to look at on my on my first day as a selectman when we went out to really? Boston. Remember? We went out to Boston. We're like, let's do three lights. Yeah. So it's, it's a process. Fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, time. Um, painful process, hasn't it? Yep. <laughs> That's government. <laughs> We've learned, learned the hard way. <laughs> um, this actually has been started, Trevor. I, I don't want to burst your bubble. No, you've been doing this before me, right? Yeah, right. It's been at least 10 years. <laughs> and so I did have a quick conversation with, I haven't talked to the entire committee, um, but I had conversed with M.A. Swedlin about yep. this. So she was trying to coordinate getting in contact with Mark Whiteman and Great. trying to coordinate with Eversource. So we're trying to work through those things. I'm hoping to have an answer from George about the audit reconciliation so we have a number. All right? It's going to be around <laughs> 60 to $65,000 mm -hmm. to purchase the lights. Right. I knew that. Yeah. So my question for the board is, are you willing 
once we get that information, I will shoot it out to you once I get it. Um, because I just got, I just shared emails between Esther and, and George. All right. So once I have that information, um, we can't wait too long on it because we have to secure the funding. Just so my question is, is would you authorize perhaps the chair to sign the purchase yes. and sale? I make, I make a motion or for the chair. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye, Charlie Aye. Daniel. Aye, Carolyn. No. Aye, Dave Wolf. Done. We have been working on this for so long. Moving on. I mean, the guy died on me. I remember. Least, <laughs> and then you, you got another one. I mean, you're, yes, you're the was person. another guy, but then the Green Community Group got together, the Energy Committee, and got a Green Community yeah. Grant to do it. Yep. Instead yeah. of us spending all the money, it was like, yes. I know. Fine. Matt and Gilmore so, and I talked about it a lot yeah. down at the. And that was actually 15 years ago, I think. It was a while ago. It was. <laughs> No, really, but the I know. person that I right. was talking to died. And then so then yours, yep. you know, so this was like multiple. I'm so glad something's oh. happening. It'll be good. It'll, you know, this, these little things pay off in the long run. Less money spent. I, I mean, it's going to save life. us a lot of money. And I had that yeah. conversation with George. I He's happy to come visit with you folks if you want to. I think if we were to do that. Yep, um, right. He's a talker. Yep. Love him. He's a talker. But... He, the most he did important say thing it's is going to be very, it's going to save us a lot of money. Yeah. And we can repurpose that right. saving. Right. It's going to save us over $100,000 a year. That's money that we could do something else with. And, and he had some firm. good suggestions about choosing the lights, and the lights that he picked are the ones mm -hmm. that, the lights that are available are the ones that he suggests. And right. so the nuance there is choosing the lumen. And yep. he's very educated on this. I mean, this is what he's done for years. He wrote some of the legislation. Good. You know, they have nice, nice, warm LEDs now. Yes. I really, really would hope that we could do that. It makes a difference. If you drive yep. through communities at night, the harsh ones versus the warm yeah. ones. Yep, makes a big difference for sure. And so we learn. We're, I got some advice from it Buckland. It a bit if I put the bright ones in the house instead of the... <laughs> You have to go right back and return them. I, I know. I am a comment. wicked witch about that to myself. Um, I know exactly what Mary. Comments on this? I mean, we've been working on these already. Right. Do you need something more? It's a formality. Oh, so gotcha. Trevor yeah. just asked about the request for comments. So this is a formality for any zoning change. Yeah. Um, I think Annalie is very aware of what your comments are um, yeah. for most of them. I don't know if no. you had commented on solar because I don't know if you had been at all of those meetings. Some of those meetings I hadn't been at, um, um, but this we've is had we have to on all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have to write. No, nope. nope. I'm good on all that. And Ali, we've, we participated and we uh, intend to come or I intend to come yeah. on Monday again. So we're good. We're good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you want the select board for Monday? No. Uh, I didn't care what it's going. Okay. I've yeah. got another one. All right. Trevor, Trevor covered the finance committee, so I'll, I'll go back and do the planning board one. That was fun. They're meeting again on Wednesday. They want to go over the funding articles, too. Oh, no. Um, yeah. So now they're going to give me crap about the funding. Um, do you think right. you can get the warrant article thing ready for Monday? Because I, I really I have so many meetings on Tuesday that I don't think I can drive down here on Tuesday. Annalie, are you doing remote or are you doing hybrid? Uh, for the 13th, it's hybrid. So what if they make any changes to the language, that's what we have to incorporate on Tuesday. No, I mean just the signature page. Um, let me talk to Barbara. Yeah, I think yeah. that's probably Okay. So do you want me to go to my report? Yes. yes. Oh, we have the appointment? No. Oh, that's unanticipated. That's unanticipated. Okay. That's right yep. after. So I, David mentioned it earlier, I did get an update on the landfill solar project. The impact study is due to wrap up at the end of September and NextAmp is cautiously optimistic about the outcome. That's all they'll say. But they've also contracted with Weston and Sampson for the engineering and permitting, so they're moving forward. We should hear more from Ben Axelman in a few weeks. Um, the Oxford property RFP is out and it's available through the COG bid webpage. The, we, re, we received a request for a transfer of a cannabis HCA uh, host community agreement mm -hmm. from, and I wanted to know if the board wants to consider doing a straight up transfer or go through a negotiation process. Negotiation. And the reason I'm asking is because the 
agreement that you just agreed to with Sunny Days Cannabis does include some changes from the original agreements that you signed? I would like to see a new agreement. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. I'd like to meet whoever we're yeah, exactly. working yeah, with. Yeah, I've been contacted yep. by by a, the law firm, but okay. I haven't. I wanted to talk to you guys yeah, about it. Definitely want to meet them and have a discussion for okay. sure. Okay. We're we're not adverse. It's no, just, not at all. This is. This I mean, I want to feel. I want to know who our partners are. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, the concern I have is. What the heck's going on? Well, is with the change of the floodplain map, it has some bearing on that property. We can look at that. Because the map that we had during the meetings was not updated. Wasn't updated and didn't include that, but the new one does. So what we voted on wasn't actually accurate. So you've got landfill, solar, and offshore. So property. that's the Oxford project. A few other things okay. they came up. Grant. So. I had been I had received a request from MEMA to put together some information from FEMA or for FEMA for the possible declaration from July. So we're trying to pull that together. I've been working with Kevin's been great. Kevin and Chuck have been great. Um, we're gonna try to get that done tomorrow. That is a lot of work. And my buddy across the river had a had a question about perhaps working with other towns to share a position for a grant person that would include FEMA. I guess Amherst is hiring for a FEMA person, but they're not hiring full time. Hmm. So he threw it out at a meeting today, and I just wanted to throw it at you guys. Yeah. Jeff Kravitz from Sunderland. Veronique was kind of interested in it too. So it may be that if we okay. want to do some sort of grant administration, we definitely need to include FEMA because FEMA is so onerous yeah. now. Yeah. But I think, together. especially with the DRs, um, the disaster relief funds, but I think it's I, worth it. I would be very supportive because um, for every declaration, 15% is set aside for hazardous mitigation money. And it's a grant process that you have to jump through the hoops for, but that hazardous mitigation money is good money mm -hmm. to do the kind of stuff we need done. So if we had well, a shared that. person that could handle the FEMA stuff, they that's part of the hazardous mitigation process, and that would be 100% to our benefit. And maybe this builds some capacity for some of that other grant administration yeah. that we know yeah. we need. For so sure. That's the reason I'm bringing it up now. It came up in a It has to be somebody in house because um, you know you can't have you can't have a consultant doing right. work. Yep. Well, if we share it through an MOU, mm -hmm. then yeah. we figure out how to. Yeah. I know, but they they have access to Brenda and, mm -hmm. and our town fund. And, and so one of the things that I want to do is take some relief on the reporting requirements off of Brenda because she's got mm -hmm. bigger bigger fish to fry. Yeah. Especially right now. Yep. So. Okay, I will. Right. I will Let check out, out, check it with my buddies, and report back. Um, and you know, with your network, see if one of the other area towns that have basically the same demographic that we have or close to it is looking for a planner. Well, you know, and it may not be necessarily be the out. same demographic, but because each town's bylaws are different. Yeah. But the planning discipline itself is the same. Yeah. So it's, I've had that conversation more than once. Assuming I can go to the meeting tomorrow, I have a meeting tomorrow. Um, but we had a little thing happen in the office today. So if I can't go, I'm going to reach out to a couple of my friends that I had spoken to. I was hoping I could go so I could chat with a couple of folks and see if we could get that process started. Okay. Because I do think we need to really pursue that. Yeah, I do too. Um, and for purposes of economic development and use of ARPA, that is a potential funding source because we do have some economic development um, projects that are in the offing that we need to, con you know, utilize some sort of collaborative way to pull all that stuff together, which is what you guys had mentioned yet a yep. few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we, the four town town administrators, had a meeting with the superintendent and business administrator, and 
one of the things that came out of that is use of ARPA funds. So we may see some communication from the superintendent's office, but I was in the midst of that conversation. The towns around us are creating advisory boards, including other members of boards like school committee members, finance committee, um, select board members, and some staff members. Okay, see, we just do don't have the time or the bandwidth for that right now. We're, we, we've already, I think there's real consensus that we're going to do the Larry lot. We might want to do that further on for the second um, section of money, but we're pretty much set what we're going to do with our money right now. Well, but we have a commitment to work with Franklin mm -hmm. County Community Health. Um, that's ARPA fund related. Yep. We, so I think we need to have a chat about it because there's a lot of things that are flying around and, you know, the Leary lot's one thing, but. I know, but we just, you're talking about everybody's meeting out already. I know that, but buy-in from these groups that are going to see these these projects come before them is important. So I'm throwing it out there. I know the delivery lot's important, but I'm also thinking that to enhance this building, we go in, we take the boilers and stuff. So we've had a request to and use for HVAC. HVAC. Yeah, I can, we can make the decision. Later. Yeah, I know. I, I but I'm just saying that's just something that, you know, no. that could increase our footprint here temporarily and also augment, you know, because whatever we do, I agree. I agree. It, it's just going to be used, whether it's used for us or if the feasibility says we can move the seniors here and use for that. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, so much wasted space there. And we've got you can get eight gallons of, gallon of, of yeah. fuel oil there that we've got to dispose of. So HVAC is a question. It's actually yeah. a question the schools are struggling with as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it is allowable. Mm -hmm. So I've even had the question from John about his shop, whether we could utilize ARPA funds for that. So there's a lot of questions out yeah. there. I think we need to start yeah. digging into it, although you have it for two more years, three more years. Yeah. I, I just... So it's not... We'll it's the project time planning time. that's important because if we don't sort of put it in some sort of a planning um, documentation frame, people won't be able to keep track of it. And that's really, yeah. that's the thing that smacks us in the ass on the other end, sorry. Mm -hmm. that it, it smacks everybody if we don't start from a project planning phase and then move into that, yeah. whatever the reporting phases are. I agree. So the other thing that came out of the meeting with the superintendent is we're going to see a communication from the superintendent to accept an MOU that DESE and DCS have entered into to provide educational transportation for homeless or fostered students. It'll probably come in the next month or so. Um, Darius, it's, it's a new thing that the select board is required to accept. So he advised us, all the town administrators of that this morning. So we'll see it, I'll forward it to you and we'll put it on an agenda. We're required to accept. It's not a contract that we negotiate. It's actually a DESE DCF contract, but the towns have to review it. And apparently the select board and the school committee have to look at it. I didn't know that. Okay. So I learned something new. Um, and I think Trevor mentioned it earlier to me was teacher negotiations are coming up. Yeah. And so the superintendent requested that I notify everybody that the select board needs to appoint a member or a designee to participate in this. And it's FRS, right? Or is it the... I think it's union. The elementary school, yeah. FRS union or elementary school it's union? Elementary. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure because I think... I think our frontier negotiates, right? Our school committee front, frontier representative So it must be elementary. I think school. it's the elementary one. It's us and um, we had talked to Skip last time, but I don't know if he's still interested. So it's not a... It's not... It's looming. It's not in front yeah, of you yet. Right He's going to send me an email, yeah. so I'll okay, we'll talk about we'll it. talk about it once he gets there. But I wanted to warn you about okay. it. Yeah. Sounds good. Because we're going to have the police contract coming up shortly. Yep. So. Right. Yep. Okay. So there's a lot of contracts in the office. And then the only other thing is, once 
Brenda and I are both back from vacation, and we waited specifically <laughs> till after we could. She waited for free cash, <laughs> and I waited till after the summer. So the budget process will need to be developed. And yep. um, I didn't tell you, Trevor and I were at the when we were at the finance committee meeting. Um, they did their reorganization. So Julie's going to be working with Julie Shalfont's the chair. Right. She'll she'll be working with Brenda and I. So Brenda usually communicates directly with them, but I it helps if I'm informed so that we can coordinate better. Because I really do think if we tried to well coordinate, it would be useful. Mm -hmm. yeah. It worked out really well. Yeah. Please, we all please make sure that well. Julie knows that we're very pleased that she's... Yes. Well, I think if we could do some coordinated efforts, people yeah. wouldn't have to repeat themselves so much. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And everybody hears the same comment. Mm -hmm. And everyone can participate. Yeah. yeah. No, it worked out really good last year. Yeah. And so one thing that I will let you know, there is a doodle poll out there. The Tilton Library trustees want to meet with you. Mm -hmm. And I've suggested meeting with Capital and Finance and TBAC. Yep. So that we can talk about the building project. Right. So I'm suggesting we do that as a separate project. We'll have to finalize the poll, and I'll send out an email and let you know okay. when a good date for everybody is. I think I sent yeah. that poll to you. Yeah, after yeah. the special government meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Because we're, I think, second on the list at this point yeah. from what Candace said. So they want to dis – the reason I suggested that we talk as a bigger group is because I thought some of the conversations that finance, the select board, and capital had this previous budget season were very fruitful. And now that we know that we're closer, it's a good opportunity to sit down and chat because there were some real questions that came up about debt ceiling and stuff yep. mm -hmm. that I think – the library trustees don't have the benefit of all that information because they don't come to every meeting. So that was the reason I suggested it. Um, so that's going to, you'll see that come across your email too, so keep an eye out. Because okay. I did suggest a separate meeting for that. And then there was an item unanticipated to, Emily Gaylord requested appointment to the Cultural Council. Yep. Um, yes, Jennifer Marfisi, um, they've been having a hard time there. Um, quorum, right? Yeah, they've had a hard time getting a quorum in their um, grant cycle has started. So she was hoping that Emily would be appointed so that they could have a quorum for their meeting. Yeah. I've so done. I make a motion to appoint Emily Gaylord to the Culture Council, and I really appreciate her volunteering and stepping forward. Yeah, I, I would second that. I read her letter of interest, mm -hmm. and um, I think I think she'd be a great addition yeah. to that group. So I'm very very excited. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Carolyn McDaniel. Aye. Dave Wolfer. Um, I uh, only yeah. other are unanticipated item is I just want to say that um, the name that we um, all of us group of the senior housing senior whatever we came up with connected community initiative to try to encompass. Right. I love All that. this Leary Lot, Senior Center, Community Center, Library, mm -hmm. Commons, any anything that's going on down here. Connected Community Initiative. Initiative. So it's going to be the big umbrella of yeah. all these different groups that have all these different. Even an acronym already. So this took a whole two. You hours. forgot the tagline. What? All right. What is it, Jennifer? Oh, yes. Go ahead, Jennifer. I forgot. It's Deerfield's Next 350. Yes. Yes. I, Deerfield's Next 350? Next, next. Oh, 350. I like that. Hmm. that. That actually was my addition. It was. I wasn't going to give up. I wasn't going to give up. We had initiative, but we didn't have what we were supposed to come up with. So it was connected. This is a community effort. Denise Mason. Jennifer, Remillard, um, you know, Lily, Annalie, Connected Community Initiative, and Deerfield's Next 350. Sounds 350. Good. Sounds so, good. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be future so good energy. Yeah. One yeah. Thing that we I forgot, have, Jennifer. Thank you. Public cover. Uh, well, just real quick. You're welcome. We talked about, uh, did you mention the Oxford? RFP that's in the paper, right? It was in the paper. It's on. It's, it's been published in okay. the required right. places. It's right. available through the um, COGS bid, bid webpage. Perfect. Thank you. All right. 
Do we have any public comment? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey. I'd like to speak if I might. Um, I, I know everyone's really tired and I want to thank you all for everything you do, truly. Um, and I just, you know, I, I can't let the night go by without saying that, you know, clearly you've gone into executive session a couple times now with the ACLU, violations of free speech issue being, I assume, a part of those conversations. Um, and the community is waiting. We're waiting. We're respectfully hoping for respect. We're waiting for some kind of attention and communication and connection about the violations of free speech that happened and have happened over the years, but particularly that happened in regards to conversations about um, the regulatory boards and the way that um, women in the community were shut down during those meetings. Um, so I'm tired. I'm sure you're all tired, but I can't let the night go on without just saying, you know, I appreciate you. I know this is tricky. I know you probably have learned things from your legal counsel in these meetings that you didn't know before. We're human. I'm human. Everyone in these meetings is human, but we're feeling like this is going into the black hole and we don't want that to happen because this is important. Everybody's rights need to be respected. Everybody's voice needs to be respected. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this has been Any referred other, to council. Any other questions? And they're in, working, with the working through it. We're working through it. Um, Any other comments? Yeah. Any, any other comments? I guess I just want to just say that Honestly, there is back and forth with um, the Civil Liberties Union, and, and, and there is back and forth happening. Um, we just haven't settled on, well, we thought we had something settled, and we all agreed to it, actually, but it's still going back and forth. It's in litigation right now, so we can't comment any further. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, and just, you know, I know you probably know this, but, you know, Many of us who were present in those meetings and who were trying to speak, um, we're feeling your silence and it doesn't feel good. It hurts. And this is our community and we don't want that. We want there to be open communication and at least an acknowledgement. Maybe it's saying, you know, like what you said right now, we're, we can't talk about it yet, but we're working on it. Like that would have been great coming out of executive session if you could have said that for, the, for all of us to hear. Um, and we hope to hear more as you go along, even if it's not resolved, but to have some updates of whatever you can share because the silence, well, it feels hurtful actually. So thank you. Well, any that's comments? the issue with litigation. There's no any comment. Other comments? <clears throat> any other public no. comment? No. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, it looks thank like, you. is there somebody else there? Lily, there she oh, is. Yeah. Sorry, I had to undo all my things. I, I um, I wanted to actually just support what Lou said because I know that that there have been a lot of letters to the board about this and about a lot of other issues, and there's been no response, and so people don't know that you're addressing it. And to say it's being addressed would be helpful. So I, I just wanted to let you know that, um, that, that I agree with her. And I think that if you all could um, maybe just have a, a, a policy of responding to emails, um, that would be very helpful. Thank you. And again, let me also second her comment about, and we all are, I am so appreciative of all the work you guys do. Your 181 page packet tonight is just a small sampling, I know. So thank you. <laughs> oh my God, you looked at it. Mm. Yes, I did. Yeah. You guys That's put work really into it. <laughs> a lot of paper. Um, 
Can I speak for a second? Sorry, I'm not putting my camera on tonight. It's Jen Remillard. Um, I just want to support what Lou and Lily also have said, because there have been times where being in the audience, being um, whether in person or, or on remote, um, there have been times we not only feel, or the you know, community members, including myself, have not only felt that some of our things have been dismissed or not addressed because we're unaware of what goes on behind the scenes, um, but there's also things during meetings wherein, you know, it's it's been disappointing to see, um, you know, certain certain select board members, you know, and, and not just select board members, but other members speaking over other members participating on community boards. Um, and it's really clear and evident to see the disrespect, um, you know, by even some speakers regarding, you know, public's comments made um, regarding some boards. And there's been no feedback during those meetings, especially select board meetings in regards to that. Um, and I feel as though you as, you know, the town leadership should show and represent um, respect in general, but for fellow committees and Lost to Jennifer. To Jennifer, something happened. We can't hear you. To see, um, okay. you know, some things there. So it would be great if while public comments are going on, we could be supported, um, you know, fellow board members as well. And Lily said I dropped out. Can you still hear me? Yeah, no, we can. Jennifer. We can now. Yes. yes. Um, so I just, I just wanted to say that, and I think the community is well aware of, of all of the hard work that does go into, um, everything that the select board does and the town hall staff does, and it's not that we don't appreciate it. It's just that we, um, want to ensure the validation of other, other boards, um, because it's really it's really discouraging to get volunteers, whether they're elected to a board or a volunteer and appointed to a board, um, when there's no support by the select board um, specifically, you know, to keep that respect across the line. Does that make sense? Thank you for your comment. Sorry. Um, I hope you can still hear me. Thank you. I don't, I appreciate you listening. All right. Are you recognizing my hand being up? Yeah. yeah. Yes, you couldn't yeah, I, hear. I couldn't hear anything. The the sound went off, so I didn't know what you were. Our, our phone went mute for some reason. It's telling uh, okay. us it's quarter of ten. <laughs> well, I just wanted to applaud a comment that Dave Wolfram made tonight about his desire to save and reuse the elementary school building because I think it's a fabulous piece of architecture in our downtown. So I'm happy to hear that uh, that that's something that everyone's considering. And who knows, maybe there's uh, CPC money that could help work on that building. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Any other hands? I'm not seeing any other hands or any other comments. I, I just want to thank everyone who um, attended this long meeting. I mean, we've, we've been here since 5 o'clock, and I know a lot of you people had signed on F5. Yep. And you're still here. So listen, this is fantastic, really. It's good to have participation. So thank you. Yes, it is. Motion to adjourn. I will second that.
further discussion? Sure, I'd like to talk a little bit. Okay. Hi, <laughs> um, Carolyn, before any more things are said. Yes, no, we should, we should go home. I'm tired. Yeah, it was, it was a long meeting time. All those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Dave. All right. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you everyone. All. Have a really lovely night.